LaRue and I am calling to order this meeting of the planning board for December 3rd, 2020. Um, and we're going to, we're going to attempt the Pledge of Allegiance all together. Now. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag. United States of America yeah. and to the Republic for which it stands, stand. one nation, one nation God, under God, God with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Amen. Well, we may not have been together, but at least we're heartfelt. <laughs> okay. So, um, we are, uh, first, we're going to start off with a joint meeting of the planning board, the ZBRC and the land use committee. And so I'm going to call that meeting to order as well at the same time, and then make a brief statement. The town of Burlington will be holding the December 3rd, 2020 joint meeting of the planning board land use committee and zoning bylaw review committee as a virtual electronic meeting due to the current state of emergency due to the COVID-19 virus. As such, the governor issued an ex executive order on March 12th, 2020, authorizing remote meetings under general law, chapter 30 a section 20. So for everyone on this meeting will be held. It's going to be a, um, uh, Cisco WebEx. Um, the WebEx link is on the link from the town calendar, but it's town of Burlington .webex .com. The meeting number is 173-478-1471. The meeting password is 2020. You might also join by phone at 617-315-0704. The meeting is also being broadcast um, via BCAT on the government channel, which can be found on Comcast Channel 99, RCN 15, Verizon 41, and streamed on Facebook Live via the BCAT Facebook page. The public will be able to make comments during the, the hearing. During the time for public comment, questions can be asked via WebEx, WebEx chat function, Facebook Live, calling the planning department office number 781-270-1645 and by email at planning at burlington.org during the meeting. All persons wishing to ask a question or make a comment must identify themselves. If you have any questions regarding participation, you may call planning staff at 781-270-1645 or email us at planning at burlington.org. Um, once the joint meeting has concluded, the planning board will commence with its posted agenda items via the virtual meeting session all previously stated means of access and public input will re remain the same once the planning board meeting begins all votes will be taken by roll call and we need to just step back and roll call vote the meeting to order of the three boards which will take us a few minutes but liz take it away all right um so i'm going to start off with the planning board so chairman larue yes vice chairman and pemba Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Here. Member Espejo. Present. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Rappaport. Present. Um, I'm next going to go to land use committee members. Um, do we have Chairman Pearson with us? Do we have Member Curtin with us? Member Detucci. Member Ellis, Member Kinchla, Member Mercier, Member O'Brien, Member Webb, or Member Calandrelli. All right, I'm moving on to the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee. Do we have Chairman Ellis? Yes. Vice Chairman Hughes? Yes. Member Byer? Member Maniscalco, Member Murray, Member Parsons. Aye. Member Donahue, Member Ryan, Member Willard. Hmm. All right, that is all. Thanks everyone. Liz, Member, Member Donahue was here, he was on mute. Okay. I don't know if you caught him. Excellent. Duly noted. Oh, Thank you. Mute on when I said here oh. for buyer. Okay, so we have member member buyer is also here for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so again, this is a joint meeting of the ZBRC, the Land Use Committee, and the Planning Board, and this is a public hearing, a petit petition to amend the zoning bylaw, Article Two definitions, Article Four use regulations, and Article Five dimensional requirements. Article 6, non-conforming uses and structures, 
Article 7, general regulations. Article 8, overlay districts. Article 9, administration and procedures. Article 10, miscellaneous and special regulations. Article 11, special residential regulations. And Article 12, plan development districts to address housekeeping matters submitted by the planning board. Um, Justin, can I ask you to just give a very brief um, summary of what this is? It's, I know it's very simple. Um, sure. I actually am probably going to share my screen and just scroll through. Um, it's law. It, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, very many little things. Um, uh, this has been submitted for the January town meeting. Um, we also expect that, or we know that another matter for January town meeting will be the change from board of selectmen to select board that it was recently approved by this, um, the select board, the board of selectmen to assume the select board. Um, and that will not be, we're not going to discuss that tonight, but that will come up on January 7th at our next meeting. Um, and I also, anyway, so. Um, and I also want to note that there's a lot of little things here. And as I go through it, anyone is um, so into zoning and housekeeping amendments that they would like to assist um, myself. And I know Sherry and I will, and um, some members of zoning by law review. We do need to get this um, housekeeping amendment polished for the print warrant by December 23rd. So if anything comes up that strikes you as, oh my goodness, I don't like that, I love it, or I wish you added X, Y, and Z, um, we do need to know in short order. We don't need to do all of it tonight, but um, <clears throat> I would ask that those of you that are interested contact the planning department um, to get involved. And we probably will post a public session of some sort, um, not necessarily a public meeting, but some sort of kind of subcommittee just to discuss and give opportunity for that feedback before the 23rd print warrant deadline. So. Um, with that, Brady usually share, so give me a second. Here we go. Uh, can you, all right. Can you see zoning by law? Yes? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna run through some of uh, the changes. Scrolling fast because just to um, get to them, and I will be scrolling fast, but then slowing down when I have something to talk about. Oh, so <laughs> wish I did have something to talk about. Um, anyway, the sec Article Two, the biggest change in Article Two is if you all can see, we have this. Um, we, when we renumbered the article two, we took the alphabet and pretty much said, uh, article two is article two, A is one, B two, et cetera, up to Z 26. And then we added a third number. What has happened since, you know, our genius of renumbering uh, 11 or 12 years ago is that, you know, we've added a whole bunch of new definitions. And then we have these, you know, 2.12.3.4.1.1.1. Um, so what we do propose is that we take away that third decimal point in terms of article two, and then everything in A is one, everything in B is two, and then it's just alphabetical within the actual um, numbers. So that's actually one of the biggest changes that we propose um, in terms of this housekeeping, but it's just, it just has gotten so, so messy in terms of kind of trying to fit things in with lots and lots of numbers. Um, Let's see. Um, um, can you guys see the red line at all? I'm, for some reason, I'm not seeing the red line that I, in my screen. Nope. You're not seeing red line either. No, I'm not either. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, why the red line's not coming up. But anyway, um, in Article 3, which um, we actually didn't post, but we're going to fix the posting when we re advertise when we advertise for the um, selectmen. We, uh, as all of you remember, and I thank you for um, the support, the, all the zoning article, map, or the zoning maps were updated in 2017. We're just adding that they were updated in 17. Um, article 4, use regulations. Um, there's 
wish this was red line. This is tricky. Um, if you guys look at C in hotel, it says C1020. Um, we've been adding these as we add new ones, but there's a bunch of older um, uses that have subsections in Article 10, but they're not called out here. So we wanted to fix that. You have the staff report up, uh, Kristen. I, oh, I do? All right, I'm trying, I'm using another like second monitor and it's kind of, sorry. Um, <laughs> do you see it now? Yes, it's the table now. Yeah, oh, I'm sharing my screen. Maybe that's a problem. Okay, so can you guys hold on just a second? I'm gonna stop sharing and try to share that. Sorry about this. Brady is so much better at this than I am. <laughs> Are we back? Do you see the zoning bylaw? Yes. Well, the, it's the table. Yeah, the table. That's fine. Um, okay. So we added, and I apologize that this is not read, but um, we added a note to you know see the section in Article 10. Um, we had an issue that we noticed with, um, well, and the marijuana article 10.6. We had an issue that we noticed when we did the storage in September is we actually didn't allow for the accessory use storage in um, in any other district except for the ones uh, that we, oh, here, why is this red? Um, oh, yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, these, we numbered them incorrectly. Because we actually we moved um, self storage facility, so we just had to renumber these. These none of this has changed. It's just the the number changed. Um, and then I apologize. This is I don't know why some of it's red and some of it's not. Um, integrated parking structures um, that was is actually just as it was that it was just passed. Um, oh, storage incidental to a permitted use. This is the one that we, um, we for some reason didn't allow it in IR, IH, BL, and BN. It was an oversight. It meant to be, yes, you of course can have storage principle to your use. So that that is was corrected. Um, the And then back down here, if you guys, every time we talk about aquifer and water resource, um, it's this kind of, complication of you have to go to that article to understand how it works. So it's not that the overlay overrides the underlying zoning. It's kind of in addition to, so if you have fuel storage, for instance, in the aquifer, um, that doesn't, and it says, you know, special permit, you need a special permit where it might be a yes in the underlying. But also if it's a yes in aquifer water resource, it doesn't mean that overrides something in the underlying. So this was just literally to like explain that that was the case. Um, I don't remember what that was because it's not red. <laughs> so sorry. Um, it didn't change. Um, In Article Eight, I know we had a bunch of outdated, um, outdated references, such as the. If you guys remember, the MDC used to exist, um, and we had requirements there. So we we fixed some outdated, um, you know, flood stuff and um, the MDC references. I think it's still in here somewhere. Wetlands districts didn't change. <laughs> Um, the digitized map for the new resource water resource districts. Um, let's see. And then uh, that's that's about it. Um, we did submit a wireless overlay for a, a wireless amendment. We are not moving forward with that at this town meeting. Um, anyway, and then uh, it has been mentioned that um, by uh, the chairman of zoning by the review, Sherry Ellis, about it, we didn't change the zoning reference 
in Article 12 for to allow for electronic permitting like we did in Article 9, and that's something that we should probably consider. Um, and anyway, that it's about that's about it. I mean, it's as I said, it's it's just a lot of really little things that, that are kind of overdue for just just kind of fixing. And we also we all we never really want to miss January in terms of a zoning zoning being up front to catch some attention to do something. And I think it's appropriate to to fix some things that we've seen over time. So again, I, I reach out to um, members of the planning board, members of ZBRC to kind of assist us in a, kind of a group session to to go through these a little bit more fine fine tooth comb and make sure they're where we want everything before uh, December or pretty much December 20th. We want to kind of get it right. So with that, I'm open to questions and I'm so sorry that it's not redlined that I'm showing you. Um, I will start sharing if I can think of Okay. That um, so in terms of questions, I think what I'm going to do is first um, go to the chairman of the other two committees. Well, actually, I'm not sure Chairman Pearson is here, but we'll check and see if maybe he arrived. Um, but could we start with Chairman Ellis? Do you have any questions or comments on this? Um, thanks, Margaret. No, at this time, I don't really have any questions. I certainly will sit in when Kristen and I know Ed Parsons um, said he would join in too and, and review when she wants us to do that. I've got a couple other little things I could um, mention, but we can do that in a later meeting. Um, I, I will say, I think that I saw that um, um, the from land use is the chair said that they were not going to weigh in on this one. So that's why you don't see anybody here. I thought I saw that email and then I couldn't find it. Thank you, Sherry. I was thinking <laughs> that maybe I had imagined it as well because I couldn't find it. So since it was strictly um, a text I, amendment, he, he felt that that committee didn't really need to weigh in on this one. So, okay. So there was no one here from land use, correct? Not that I saw, okay. but I don't want to speak for them. So, but, um, okay. thanks. Right. I don't have any real comments at this point. Okay, are there any other members of the ZBRC that have any questions or comments? Okay, all right. Can I ask, um, um, uh, Madam Chair, can I ask just when, um, ZB, when ZBRC's next meeting is and if it's gonna be before December 20th? Our, actually, our next meeting is on Wednesday the 9th, next week. Okay, fantastic. Can we also use that meeting a little bit as a session? I mean, you can decide how you want to do it, but. It's, it's listed as an agenda item, so we certainly will be talking about it. So that would be great if you want to join us. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Um, so now I'm going to turn this to the planning board and see if anyone on the planning board has any questions about this. However, this is Ernie. Just a okay. question for Kristen. Is the uh, marked up and red line copy of the changes available somewhere? Um, yeah. They should be well what brady sent you which i sent him i thought was red line so um yes and i think jen has them up on the website thank you but, um, as i said the website's in transition so we're still working on getting everything um up where it should be but um yes it's on absolutely. the website it is jen's fantastic okay. any other planning board members that have questions Bill, hi. Just, just I, I don't know if it, if, if, if the uh, version of the website's redlined um, properly, I don't think it'd be a problem, but sometimes uh, it's easier uh, for some changes like that to actually have a table of a two uh, from it to a two. So here's what it is, here's what we're changing it to. And it sounds like it's fairly, wouldn't be that hard to do. And that, that helps to kind of go exactly what's changing here to here to here to here to here. Okay. If, that, if that's not something that's not too much trouble, um, that might be easier for the for the board to kind of just take a quick look and read through versus trying to figure out red line changes. If you know, sure. I'm used to red line changes on contracts all the time. I just got off uh, a call an hour ago on one, but uh, tables tend to be a, a little more simpler for folks that aren't used to it. Yeah, and again, I apologize that, I, that what I'm showing you is not what I thought it was. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else on the planning board? Okay, though well, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the in the audience that would like to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing no one, I guess we are ready to move on. Now we are not voting on this, right? We're just gonna continue this. 
you're not voting on it, you're going to continue it. But as I said, the, the, you know, as we, as always, coming into January and and this, and since we're opening it so late, um, we just want to make sure we have a good group together so we're comfortable with the print warrant. Okay. All right. I, yes, please. Motion to continue this matter of the planning board meeting of January 7th, 2021. Um, you can also include in that motion because you have a joint meeting in front of you, the okay. meeting to the planning board meeting of just January 7th, as well as the land use committee meeting of December 9th. And then you, we can take a, a, a roll call vote of both boards and then and we can move on. So you want that added to the motion? Or you can say so. <laughs> you just say so move, yeah. Except it should be the ZBRC instead of land use. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so moved. Second. All Thank right. You. So for roll call, Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Pemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. And from the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, Chairman Ellis. Yes. Vice Chairman Hughes. Yes. Member Byer. Yes. Member Manispalo. Member Murray. Member Parsons. Aye. Member Donahue. Yes. Member Ryan. Member Willard. Yes. Okay, thanks everyone. So um, that concludes our joint meeting and now we're just gonna move right into the planning board meeting, which we have already called to order, I believe. Um, so we're going to start with citizens time. If there's anyone present who wants to speak on a matter that is not on our agenda, please identify yourself now. All right, seeing no one, we will move on to announcements. Kristen? I will hand that over to Liz because she's so good at okay. it. Thanks. So um, just for everybody's, um, just so everybody knows, um, the Middlesex 3 um, Transportation Management Association is um, doing a webinar that is um, the changing face of retail. It's going to be on December 8th at 12 o'clock. It's kind of a lunch and learn session. It's via Zoom. Um, and our esteemed Kristen Kasner will be on the panel to talk about that. So if anybody's interested, let us know and we'll give you the information. Um, the zoning, as we just mentioned, the Zoning Valor Review Committee is going to be on December 9th at 6 p.m. Um, general and financial warrant articles, they are due December 11th at 1 p.m. at the Selectman's office. Um, Northwest Park Housing Committee is um, being moved to December, is it December 16th at 1.30 via WebEx? Um, and then I can't believe it, but Christmas is upon us. Um, December 24th, the town hall will close at noon and we will be, um, and through the 25th. So we'll be back up the net following Monday. And then New Year's Eve, um, on December 31st, the town hall closes at 3 p.m. Um, and is closed on January 1st and will reopen on the following Monday. So Kristen, I don't know if anybody else has any announcements to make for the group. Have at it. Paul Raymond, yes, please I, go would, ahead, Paul. I would just like to, I would just like to note that before any of our other meetings, uh, December seventh is a holiday which is very important to many of us and to the country. That was the attack on Pearl Harbor. So, uh, in 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 the opening event, if you will, of World War II, it was a terrible thing. If you get to uh, uh, to Hawaii, go out to the memorial, which is over the uh, battleship Wisconsin, and there are like 1,500 to 1,800 uh, skeletons under there of the brave men who died in that attack. Thank you, Paul. Um, so we're gonna move on, but I did wanna make one other little, it's not an announcement, but just an acknowledgement. 
although we didn't have a, a big tree lighting ceremony and Santa wasn't able to come this year because of COVID, we do have a fabulous light display on our town common. It looks beautiful. Um, our town did a wonderful job once again this year. So I encourage everybody to take a drive by. It really looks wonderful. So we do not have any legal notices or non-approvals. So we're moving on to administrative matters. And um, the first matter on our agenda is item 7A, a discussion, application for approval of a minor engineering change, 75 Middlesex Turnpike, the Burlington Mall, Tesla Incorporated is the applicant. And who is here representing this applicant? Hi, Trevor Smith from Tesla is on. I believe we also have um, Justin Feldhaus from Simon representing the property. Um, and Ted um, Crawford from Dewberry Engineers um, as well. Okay, thank you. Um, why don't you jump right in and tell us what it is that you're proposing? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you uh, for everyone's time uh, this evening. Um, so Tesla is proposing to install one of our DC fast charging uh, stations at the Burlington Mall on the north side. Um, at Tesla, we're a very mission-driven company. Uh, part of that mission is to, or really the, the mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy and transportation. Um, and in part, um, uh, what's needed to fulfill that mission is to install these level three fast charging stations to facilitate uh, electric vehicle owners to drive long distances and be able to have a place uh, to pull off major highways um, and charge their car in, in 30 to 60 minutes. Um, and so what we like to do is, is gear towards a nice amenities that are close to the highway, um, give people uh, options while they charge uh, and park their car. Um, so we've, uh, we have a larger relationship with Simon and we've worked with them down in Braintree uh, and across the country. Um, Tesla specifically has uh, over 1000 charging stations uh, across the country. Um, it wasn't too long ago in 2015, we had just over 200. So um, we've had quite a bit of growth, um, uh, which is a great uh, thing to see. Um, electric uh, vehicle adoption uh, is taking off and it's here and it's great. Um, and this really just cements that, um, that legacy uh, and furthers our mission. Um, so what the uh, charging station will consist of is 12 charge posts, um, one uh, electrical transform utility transformer, a switch gear, and three supercharger cabinets. Um, the cabinets are what um, you know converts the alternating current from the grid to direct current um, uh, to charge the batteries. Um, so you can see here, you know, kind of the high level layout. Um, it's going to be on the north side of the property, as I was uh, saying. The equipment's kind of tucked uh, to the side there, and the charge posts will be kind of in line with the. Ex existing parking uh, field. Um, so with that, um, I'll, I'll open up to any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, before I turn this over to the board for questions, I'm gonna ask our staff to weigh in, please. Sure, um, so this proposal is um, for Tesla to add charging stations um as well as equipment just as um mr smith, smith just mentioned um it's what you're looking at is the new drive the if you're the plan on your left is the new village 85 middle sex turnpike where this is proposed is the former sears parking lot um this is that drive that comes out to burlington mall road um it's a total of 12 charging stations and where the equipment is stored stored will take uh cover three parking spaces um i know that they did submit we just we spoke with them on tuesday with the development coordination meeting um and there were some questions about reasons for this location reasons for the you know just to explain why um you know for the the number they chose as well as we had asked for some renderings of other locations uh, or pictures of other locations and renderings of this location. So Brady, I don't know if you want to share some of the renderings that they have shared. Um, and I guess I would ask their team uh, to kind of reiterate the question and answers that we discussed on Tuesday in terms of really looking at the area, look why um, this spot within the mall, kind of why the configuration that was cho chosen and kind of the demand in the area and reason for the number that you're 
um, looking for. So if, um, as Brady's getting up kind of those uh, renderings of the location, if you want to answer those two questions, I think that would benefit be a benefit to the planning board. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to share um, our, our reasoning behind the size of the station and the location, um, the, the larger location that is Burlington. Um, and, and then I think Justin will be uh, the best person to uh, to answer exactly where why we landed on this part uh, of the property and larger development that's taking place. So kind of first, uh, from a high level perspective, um, we you know we're focusing, uh, as I said, this is uh, you know to help facilitate long distance travel. Um, this is a great intersection for that at the intersection of Route 3 and 95. Um, we currently have a gap in our network uh, in this part of Massachusetts that we'd like to fill in with a, with a place for our owners to charge. Um, we have a 12-stall station not too far um, north uh, on 95 in Linfield. Um, and so it, it was really helpful for us to have that station open for just over a year now, uh, be able to analyze uh, the utilization and, and the growth over the months, as well as uh, look at the forecasted uh, fleet that, that we're expecting uh, in the coming years, as well as what's currently, um, uh, as well as our current fleet that's uh, driving around today. Um, which is how we've landed on, on the 12 uh, locations. It's, it's a proven uh, area for us uh, with a lot of Tesla traffic, um, this 95 corridor and, and ring road around Boston. Um, and as far as the uh, geographic location, just a, a really great intersection for people coming in and out of Boston, traveling up to New Hampshire, um, and, and, uh, and even owners, you know, traveling from uh, New Hampshire down in Connecticut, you know, uh, to, uh, to New Hampshire and through Massachusetts or to Burlington itself. Um, so, yeah, as far as the exact location on the property, that was uh, in concert with uh, Simon. Um, the landlord here um, kind of steering us in this direction and, and just can kind of speak larger to that. But I think what we always look to do and, and um, what we like to steer clear of is really prime uh, parking spaces right up front uh, in front of stores. Um, we like to put them kind of uh, off to the side and, and you know, drive traffic to uh, an underutilized part of a property. Um, and I think this location lands uh, great in between two uh, developments that it's not um, going to disrupt any of the current developments that are taking place. And it's also kind of in that uh, more overflow, lower utilized area. And um, just if you want to kind of chime in or, or provide any other context, I'm um, sure. really driven on your end. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. No, you nailed it right on the, the head, Trevor. That's uh, exactly right. So it's in between the two development buildings. Um, in an underutilized area of lot, uh, an area of the lot we, we expect to continue to be underutilized, at least until Tesla goes in. Um, it provides close uh, walking distance to the village building, to sidewalks, to make it easier for those that are here waiting for their Tesla to be charged to experience the amenities at the Burlington Mall, as well as those nearby. So, and uh, as well as the proximity to power, uh, for Tesla, it was just across the street on the other side of the property, uh, and that shorter one for them uh, um, it made it easier for them to come here. So, Madam, if, if I, Madam Chair, if I may ask a follow-up question of both of them. Um, so, one of the things that I, I, I don't have an issue in general with Tesla um, charging stations at the mall by any means, um, but I guess... We, you know, we spent uh, so much time really looking to kind of beautify this en new entrance to the mall and 85 um, uh, Middlesex Turnpike, the village um, buildings that, you know, I just kind of wondered that these, the units, the, you know, transformer units and other things being kind of right along the roadway. And I understand the proximity to um, the, the main line that you need to run into, but just curious if, um, either one of you, if, if there were other locations and or even within the parking field next to the charging stations that could kind of tuck away some of this um, infrastructure a little bit more than literally being kind of right there on the, that, that main drive is kind of was the main, one of the questions that I'd asked on Tuesday that I kind of wanted to explore a little bit. And Justin, I know you weren't on the call on Tuesday, but 
um, since we just spent, I don't know, we spent so much time really looking at this area of the mall to, to really pump pump up the um, the aesthetic appeal and just if there was a if there was discussion between the two of you as different ways to to make this look a little bit better or a different location to kind of tuck it in a little bit better on the site. Yeah, so from from what I gather, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's it's just the charge posts themselves. Uh, you don't have an uh, issue with, and not to say you have an issue with everything, but the the questions driving at more of the transformer and the proposed switch gear and cabinets. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I I guess um, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? I think if you talk to some people, they would think this is wow. These these are beautiful white. <laughs> pieces of uh, technology and hardware. Um, granted, we don't control what the utility transformer looks like. Um, but I think one thing we did talk about on Tuesday, and we're happy to um, invest in a little bit more is, is some vegetation and landscaping. I think what we were looking to do um, is to ensure that no uh, um, uh, eye path of travel is going to be blocked. So we didn't want to put it too far up in the corner there, um, yep. where if you're making a right-hand turn or coming into the developments, um, that may restrict the line of sight, um, as well as I know there is a, a setback along that road, which is why we uh, kind of positioned the, the cabinets and the equipment off of that perimeter uh, aisle. Um, and I think what, what we like to do also is um, knowing in the winter weather here, have our equipment uh, on the side. So you're not having to uh, snow plow around it 360 degrees in a parking aisle. Um, so uh, positioning that um, more in the center of the parking lot um, would, would present a, a larger a larger problem with that. And you know, certainly feasible, um, but I think the, the real crux of it is it's just, it, it was a more efficient, uh, shorter utility run. Um, it's a sizable investment from Tesla to install these stations. So um, we never look to cut corners from an, an aesthetic standpoint, um, but anytime we can um, uh, make a more efficient utility design, um, we look to do so. Um, so that's how we landed, you know, kind of in this corner with the given area uh, that Justin and the Simon team uh, gave us to, uh, to, to work with. And just to add to that, this was the only area that was unencumbered by other lease restrictions um, and was within, I, I forget the distance, but there was a distance that needed to be met uh, from the utility service. Was that distance a distance, um, a distance out or like what the distance out or distance from the units to the chargers? Like what, what's the, what was that limitation? Yeah, so we do have a limitation between where our cabinets, those three, uh, those three supercharger cabinets can um, can go in relation to posts. Uh, it's about two hundred feet, um, so we can't, you know, put them all the way uh, on the you know side of the main building and and run it uh, all the way out. Um, as far as the the utility, um, the transformer itself. Um, I mean, as a, as a property owner, I don't want to speak too much for Justin, but um, there is uh, an easement that's associated with any time extending um, this type of service. So uh, kicking the transformer further into the parking field really limits their ability um, down the road to potentially redevelop the area because then you'd have an easement running through the parking lot. Um, and this way, you know, the easement is really only running through the drive aisle. Uh, which isn't, you know, at risk of, of being redeveloped uh, and this side corner of, of the lot, which again is, is a very low risk, you know, redevelopment. Um, so I think from, from both angles, we're a little constrained um, with, with what we have to, to work with. Okay. So the white cabinets need to be close to the chargers. The transformer needs to be close to kind of public ways or ways is kind of yeah. what I heard there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Um, well, I have lots of questions, but I'm going to turn this over to the board first. Um, Vice Chairman and Pembo, would you like to weigh in? Uh, sure. It's, it's kind of hard to tell by the rendering of exactly you know what, where it's located, but I'm assuming that this is that the aisle. This is we're looking at the rendering we're looking at is probably where, would be where Cafe Nero is, looking across the yes the entrance. Yes. yes. 
Okay, here this is a, a better shot. So I I'm trying to, uh, and so that so that I mean that those three cabinets of of what we're going to be looking at coming into the main entrance on that side of the mall. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Yeah, those three cabinets, uh, as uh, the area that's highlighted proposed equipment location, that's where those three cabinets uh, are, are being proposed. Okay, so I guess I'm, I'm, not, I'm having a still having it even with this. Um, that, that's the mall road. We're coming off the mall road. And we have something on the side of the of the building as well. What's that? Joe, I don't think there's anything on the side of the building. If you turned into this drive from Mall Road and you had yeah. Cafe Nero yeah. on your right, yeah. this would all be on your left, the cabinets so right at, next the, to the, the road. The rendering I'm looking at on the TV right now is um, there's something on the other side as well. And that's a little, sure that's, that's just where they took the photo from, I think. That's just showing you where the photo was taken from. It is, at least that's what okay. I think that little red dot is. Correct. Well, the, the dot with the white, with the white. Okay. Yeah. I can't yeah. make out the. I can't make out what it says on there. So. I understand. Yeah, so well, I, you're very I old, mean, Joe. I'm, so I'm, your eyes don't see it very well. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> past my bedtime, I think I'm going to bed now. Uh, well, Brady made it bigger I, for us, so now we can see I, it. I can't, yeah. I there there we go. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, I I just. I can't help but think there's a better location for that. I would assume, and I wasn't of the understanding, and, and now I'm understanding a little bit more about what it is. It's not just, these are not just charging stations for people that are at the mall. These are charging stations for the general public who may be on 128 or maybe on Route 3, mm -hmm. and, they, and they need a charge, and their vehicle somehow notifies them that there's a charging location over here. Is that, is that how that works? Um, yeah, it's it's not dissimilar from from any level three charging station that's out there and the ones that currently exist on the road. So I think property owners and Justin can speak uh, to this directly. I uh, see it in a, as an advantage to be able to attract um, uh, additional clientele and customers and provide exposure for the property. Yeah, um, I'm just trying, I, honestly, I'm just trying to get a, just trying to get an understanding if that's if that if I'm correct in saying that. Yes. I, I get that there's a benefit to the mall. There's probably a benefit to the mall. There's a benefit to the drivers. There's been a lot of benefits going around. But um, I just, you know, I'm my honest feeling is we've spent a lot of time and, you know, done a lot of work to make this a, a, a visually aesthetic area to come into. And I just feel like, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying. The beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. But I can't imagine anybody uh, thinking that those – three cabinets sit right out at the at entrance way are, are beautiful but um i so are there any other were there other locations because i heard that there may may be other locations that would work for this i was down there today not for this purpose but i was there using them all and uh, i also noticed over on the middlesex turnpike side is there some sort of a partnership with a bus company or something? Because there's a lot of buses being stored over in that location. And that, to me, would be a perfect – that piece of the parking lot doesn't really look like it's being used for much else. Um, and we have uh, somebody from the mall that would be able to yeah, there are There are buses that are stored over there that's also uh, – the buses are there temporarily um, at the request of the Lexington school system – um, because of COVID, so we were able to grant that for them. That lot is also where we typically s store snow during the winter time, um, and so that would make accessing that area for Tesla owners very difficult. Okay. Okay. I just, you know, I, I think it's a, the concept is great. I think it's a good it's a good way to get cars in, and you know, people, you know, additional people using the the mall and using some of the, especially where the old uh, auto center was there. You know, some of those coffee shops and and restaurants and things in there. Um, I just, you know, my thoughts are, I, I feel like it's such a high visible location, a high visibility location. I'm just, that's that's my concern with it. And I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I, I'd be able to get past that. Uh, but that's only one, one of seven. Um, so that's my big concern there. 
Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, Member Clerk Raymond, would you like to weigh in on this matter? Hi, Jesus, you coming down the mall, and that area is wide open down there, that, that whole parking lot. There are a few uh, uh, things along, along the uh, banking, which gives you some shielding from the mall road, but, but that's like a, a, a wide open space. Uh, expansive concrete and my thought would be you know a, a small uh, addition if you will but you're going to be coming down the mall road and as you turn that's what you're going to see is there any chance to have some screening there so that when you come around the corner, you just don't see all of that gear. If you could put some, you know, not too large evergreens or something along there, I know that would require some changes as far as moving the buildings and things a little bit. But to Joe's point, since I'm an acolyte of member and Pemba, that, that I would think that you, you could put something along there that would make that less stark, if you will, is what it looks to me. So uh, uh, that's it. It's it's great. I'm sure my next automobile, if I get one, is going to be electric. And uh, uh, from what's going on now, it's that's the way things are going. So we're going to need yeah. these kinds of facilities uh, and uh, I have no problem with it being there, and uh, uh, and and that is an underutilized space now. There's there's really nothing there. So, but that's just a question that I would put in. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, next up, Ernie Covino. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a couple of questions. I'm assuming, since I don't drive an electron electric vehicle yet. Uh, that these uh, charging stations, although by Tesla, can be used by any electric vehicle. Am I correct? Well, I like how you said yet, um, but this is a uh, meaning that you will someday. Um, uh, but these are proprietary uh, superchargers uh, for Tesla. This is 100% uh, investment from Tesla. Uh, there are already uh, charging stations at the mall that can serve other electric vehicles. Um, and I think it's a, just to briefly touch on it, it's a common misconception that there is a true universal standard uh, charger that can charge all vehicles. Um, the fact of the matter is in, in the United States, there's not a universal standard. Um, so for, you know, the chargers that you currently have, um, the chargers that you currently have uh, at the mall, um, a Tesla owner would need to purchase a 350 a day. Uh, delays that infrastructure, um, and less than 2% of Tesla owners have ever purchased uh, said adapter. So um, with over with around 80% of the market share, you're really talking about the quote unquote universal station being able to service 20% uh, uh, of the actual EV market. Um, but we've to close the loop on this, we, we've open sourced all of our patents, you know, people can use our infrastructure in good place. I think it's without a doubt, we have the, you know, widest um, spread most proliferate um, uh, charging infrastructure out there. But um, unfortunately, there's not a universal standard to date uh, here in the United States. Mm. Yeah, I'd say that's that's a very unfortunate thing. Obviously, it'll eventually have to come to that. I mean, everybody uses uh, gasoline or diesel. Ernie, I don't whatever. mean to move. Uh, I just yeah, go ahead, Bob. One quick ahead. question. Am I correct in understanding, though, that I understand these are proprietary to Tesla. But the other charging stations that we have, they are universal to everything except Tesla, correct? Every other electric vehicle except Tesla, correct? Um, yeah, I mean, Justin may be able to uh, comment more on that since he's more in involved in, in that uh, uh, station. But um, I know typically most of the quote-unquote universal stalls are uh, um, installed with a majority CCS. There's really three different types of chargers out there. There's a CCS charger, a Chatamo uh, charger, and a Tesla charger. 
Uh, Chatamo is kind of going away with really only the Japanese manufacturers utilizing that infrastructure. Um, and so since Electrify America is a, a subsidiary of uh, Volkswagen Group and part of that diesel skate scan, uh, Dieselgate scandal, they were, um, I think they installed majority CCS. Um, so it really all depends. I'd have to look if if the Electri America posts have both CCS and Chatamo, um, but it's it's definitely a, a convoluted situation depending on our 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 um, cables or excuse me our posts only have one one cord. Um, some units uh, have two cords, uh, others only have one. If it has two of both a CCS and a Chatamo, then yes, it can uh, service non-Tesla vehicles. If it only has a CCS. It could service most of the European cars, but none of the uh, Japanese manufactured cars at least to date, although that's somewhat changing and it's a fluid landscape. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry, Ernie, I didn't mean to warn no, you because that's... you asked that question. I thought sure. it would be the right time to Good clarify. Time. Thank you. Good. Good time. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully, you know, just a blanket statement that that will all work out in the wash 10 years from now, we'll all be using the same chargers, I hope. But uh, regardless of that, uh, the, the fact that those uh, three or four cabinets are sitting right there, so you can make the right-hand turn uh, going east on, on the mall road into the mall, you're going to see these cabinets. So I, I would hope that there would either be some way to screen them, at least from that angle, or maybe move them to the other corner, uh, where they'd be uh, parallel or along the mall road, and then also be able to screen them. I understand, uh, or I think, but maybe I'm wrong, that they need some ventilation. If they don't need ventilation, then I think it should be really easy to screen them. If they need a lot of ventilation, then you may have to uh, get really creative. Uh, do they need ventilation? I guess that's the question. Well, they do have, uh, we do have um, setbacks with, with all this equipment where we can't just uh, uh, plant uh, or, or install something directly uh, up against uh, this infrastructure. I, I will say um, the, uh, the utility transformer itself has, has a, a larger, wider um, setback area that you have to maintain so they have access to it, can replace the transformer if, if necessary down the road. Um, but yes, we, uh, we would have room and we can certainly look at installing uh, vegetation to help screen and that's something that we've done. Um, at other locations uh, as well to make it uh, more aesthetically pleasing. And uh, we're aligned uh, with that as well. I think Justin, uh, Justin and I are very much aligned uh, uh, with the planning board that, um, you know, when people drive in and look at this station, they're gonna think uh, Tesla. So the last thing we wanna do is make it an eyesore. We certainly wanna make it a, a very attractive, clean um, uh, looking uh, facility that blends in with the, uh, with the aesthetic of the overall development. Okay, so I, I don't think we're going to be uh, voting on this tonight anyways. Would it be possible to bring some um, uh, scenarios of what you might do to uh, make it look better to our next meeting? Uh, yes, we, we can we can look into that and, and present uh, an option. Okay. Either that or, or get it along the mall road where it might not be as... Uh, well, you you would still be able to advertise you were Tesla, but maybe not as uh, whatever. Okay, I'm all set, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, um, Member Bill Gaffney. Bill. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of agree with everybody's comments. Uh, I'll start at the top with uh, Member and Pembes about putting that uh, over kind of at the the no means. And I was I was kind of surprised I haven't been down the mall a little bit, but they've got some buses there, so. I think we what we did was work at the mall to get uh, basically the plan for parking, uh, you know, dedicated spaces for, you know, uh, uh, pickup, uh, electric vehicle, uh, things like this. So I I envision things like a, a you know a, a plan for this. So um, I don't recall that this was in kind of that plan of dedicating other spaces here. So that kind of concerns me. Uh, I, I agree. With and we should probably talk about the buses and, and how they got there and who approved that one in, in the parking scheme of things. Um, but yeah, I think the back back in that area where, where Joe's talking about uh, member and Pember would be a perfect spot for that. So what you're seeing is that you've got that high bank 
and it really uh, shields that from the Middlesex Turnpike, so you don't see it there. But I would imagine that uh, the, the Teslas uh, can identify where their nearest uh, supercharger station is. Um, uh, Member Covino asked the question, is the Tesla only, which is, which is a, a major concern, because I think what you, you don't really want to have is as, as more folks come up with their own schemes is have uh, charging stations per car model um, in, in, and around here. So I think the universal station is, is where you want to go with this um, in that the Tesla is unique. Uh, I don't think you want to get into a parking lot with uh, the individual uh, makers of, of the charging stations. So, I, you know, where I work, we've got charging stations and there's Tesla's parked there and they got things put in there. So I, I was on the impression that, that that was they could use the universal. It looks like they have to buy a, a $300 adapter, which is what they do. Um, at least the people that I work with that have the Teslas, and there's quite a few of them. Uh, so they all do that. Maybe those are just the two percenters. But, uh, you know, um, in the, so that's the first thing. So I, I'm kind of saying push it back because right there, that's the, that's, that's the wrong spot for it, particularly if it's – the idea is to flag it as Tesla and advertise it and, and things like that. That's not, you, you really want to push it back. Um, I think uh, other concerns I had, uh, if you, if I think, do we have any, uh, what the one in Linkfield looks like to show that? I'm familiar with the one on the, off the 101 uh, in San Jose, and it looks nothing like that. It's, it's uh, fairly protected. There's greenery around it. Uh, it's against, uh, against a, a, a field of green and, and you, you don't see it. It's, um, you know, the, the ones that I've seen, it, this is nothing like it's probably the worst. Why why would you put it right there? Um, it's just, it's just, there's no shielding with it. But the one in Linfield, if you look at it, if you want to bring that up uh, and I'll go on with my other ones. Uh, I don't necessarily buy the idea about the, the distance to the utility service because in with regard to the, uh, uh, the easement. So my question is for the location for that for the be the distance to the utility service. Does that have to be a, a technical reason, or are you saying just from an easement standpoint, you have to be so close there? Yeah. So um, the and just to recap, I, I'm sure at your office because uh, there's a lot a couple questions in there. I'm sure at your office there uh, there are level two stations. So those are, are wildly different than what we're proposing here. Those are more like six to seven hour type of charge times where you're only mm -hmm. getting 30 miles back. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that is more of a universal standard. Uh, each, each Tesla car comes with what's called a J1772 adapter. Um, so that's just kind of a, a different ballpark. Um, uh, but as far as the, the easement uh, is concerned and, and the restrictions, yeah, there are no technical restrictions um, in terms of how far we can extend an overhead or excuse me, an underground high voltage line. Um, what the, where the restrictions come in place, and I think the areas on the property come in place, is there are certain already easements or encumbrances from going in certain common areas, as well as um, if you extend an easement all the way across as a property owner, if you extend a, a high voltage line uh, all the way across a parking lot, uh, you're then giving up your right to ever develop said parking lot or to put a pad site in and a Starbucks, what have you, um, because you're granting uh, Eversource in this case rights to, you know, 10 feet of spa space running through that area. So. Um, for this example, uh, we're picking up from a manhole that's across uh, near Cafe Nero, um, and the only encumbrance is, is that dry aisle that's, that's not going to be uh, redeveloped. But if we were to, you know, extend it 100 feet further uh, into the center of the parking uh, lot that we're looking at right now, you're essentially pigeonholing yourselves from any uh, potential future development as, as a landlord, and Justin can certainly speak more to that. But from a technical side, there's no reason you can't do it, but um, there's just a reason why developers tend to put their transformers uh, near where they're where they're developing at the side of the buildings and not, you know, kind of uh, zigzagging around. Okay, yeah, no, I, I don't think we, the intention was put in, in the middle of the parking lot. I think we're sending it back uh, heading west, and so now you've got the natural uh, uh, buffer of that of, of the embankment on Millsex Turnpike, and then you can shoot that down. So that's just a choice between the property owner, which he's deciding to say, you, he wants you there, 
Um, so the, the, the kind of there's a trade off there versus putting it where uh, uh, it, it might be uh, not advantageous for, uh, you know, kind of an aesthetic standpoint. But now that we're looking at Linfield, where are the switching uh, units uh, on that one? I don't see them next to it. Where is that? Where yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for this one, uh, uh, if you're just looking at it, and you, um, it's it's just uh, north of the charge posts. Um, so there's for this one, we actually uh, uh, installed a enclosure, a Trex enclosure, uh, to surround the equipment, and you can see the utility transformer just to the right of that enclosure. Um, so if you look at the, yeah, no, that's you should be able to perfectly see it there. So maybe you can point it out to us. So is it that that gray thing straight ahead? Is that what you're thinking? That, 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 that gray thing, that is the transformer that the cursor is over. And mm -hmm. the left of that is the enclosure with the cabinets and switch gear. Hmm. And that's in an island, it looks like? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and why wasn't something that like that proposed on this one? Because... Um, I'll let you answer the, I guess it's a yeah. rhetorical question. It just wasn't. So, yeah, okay. So, okay. Well, the, the, I mean, the enclosure is really more the exception than the rule. If you look um, across our portfolio, uh, by and large, uh, the equipment um, is, uh, you know, has a few bollards around it, as well as landscaping. Um, it's a more efficient design. It's an easier access into uh, the equipment uh, as well, and and in all honesty, we avoided it um, here, and, and most landlords uh, steer against it because it's it's physically more imposing uh, than having cabinets. With the cabinets there, you have some space in between, um, as opposed to uh, just a big wall and a big box um, that you can't see around, can't see through. And again, it's um, depends on who you have. Some people like the aesthetic of of the clean white. Um, uh, cabinets versus a, a big boxed enclosure. Mm -hmm. I, personally, again, this is just one person. I, I think this looks a, a lot nicer than uh, than what was proposed, and you could actually put trees around that uh, that unit there just to even buffer it a little bit more. Um, I guess my other question, and I don't own an electric vehicle uh, yet, but um, you said for three hundred dollars you can buy an adapter for the Tesla folks to uh, use the existing ones, but that's going to be if you say it's the universal one's going to take seven to eight hours for it to charge the ones in the, currently in the mall, is that correct? No, not uh, referring to the one uh, ones uh, or making an assumption. It was about the ones uh, you uh, where you work, um, since you said Teslas were readily using them. Mm -hmm. um, the ones at the mall are level three chargers as well. Um, I believe they're governed at 150 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones we're proposing uh, are 250 kilowatt chargers. Um, so yes, if, if some, if a Tesla, um, owner purchased that adapter, which again, less than 2% of our owners have ever purchased, um, they could use those spaces. I, I will say, uh, and, um, Justin, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I think there's three or four, maybe, uh, spaces available, um, given our market share and, and size, um, we look to build a minimum of 12 stalls. And if you go. Uh, I mean, this is just a, 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 a random snapshot of, of Linfield, I'm sure uh, dated a little bit, um, but there's uh, four Teslas there already, and I've routinely gone, and we've re routinely looked at the data um, that uh, seven, eight, nine, ten Teslas are showing up all at once to charge. So um, really the third party, the quote unquote universal stations that are being built, uh, aren't being built uh, with the infrastructure to support uh, really the existing fleet of electric vehicles, if they could charge Teslas, um, and certainly not the uh, the growth and forecasted fleet um, uh, of Teslas and all electric vehicles. If if a Tesla was to use with the adapter to use the ones at the mall currently, how long would they take to charge? Um, I think it'd take about an hour, uh, forty minutes to an hour. Okay, to the existing ones that are already built at the mall with their adapter. Is, is that yeah, yeah, it's a level three station, so it's, it, it would take about it would take about an hour. Um, so you're saying about the same time but, as, the, as these woods without an adapter, right? So charging but, an electric but, vehicles, but, yeah, charging an electric vehicle is a little bit different than uh, charging uh, or than filling up a tank of gas. So it's not a linear 
uh, fill up. Um, the most efficient way to, to charge an EV is to show up to a station when you're relatively empty um, and charge up to about 80%. Once you get to that 80% threshold, the kilowatt uh, output starts to throttle down to protect the battery chemistry mm -hmm. um, and overall life of the battery. Um, so that's why that, that peak rate we have of 250 kilowatts isn't met all the way through. Um, but to get from zero to 80 percent on our on our um, within our 250 V3 superchargers that we're proposing, it's about 20 to 25 minutes. And I think a 150 uh, kilowatt station would be about 40 minutes to, okay. to do. So it's about 15, 20 minute uh, difference. Uh, so my last question, and I apologize, Madam Chair, for taking so much time up. Uh, my last question is with regard to uh, other EVs. Can they buy an adapter and, and use the Tesla superchargers? Uh, right now, they can't, no. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're on mute. Sorry, I just, <laughs> sorry about that. I said, Mike is going on, and I was wondering why Mike wasn't talking. It's because you couldn't hear me. Sorry about that. Please go ahead, Mike. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, Ernie's point kind of got me. I was all on board until we got to Member Camino's question about can everybody use these? And if they're going to be Tesla only specific, I mean, we're, the mall is doing such a nice job with these beautiful new building at 85 and the all the work they're doing there to, to re kind of, to regenerate that whole area with the outdoor area and then to put this such a high high visibility spot i agree with my fellow board members that it, we gotta i mean that is right when you come you see it right when you're driving down mall road and you see it right when you're entering the mall from the, the east side so i agree with my other board members that we i'd like to see if we could look at maybe a different position or some something to do to cover that eyesore that's right at the at the entrance of the mall and that's really my main concern and i don't like that now we're going to have separate, separate charging stations for different types of vehicles. Would the Tesla folks be opposed to putting a, putting one a universal in with theirs, or is that not? Is that like dirty pool with like the charging community or whatever? No, I, I guess the question should have been uh, the first entity that came here should have put a Tesla charger in, or that should have been kind of a, a part of the package. So um, <laughs> to, to give a snarky response, but no, I mean I think. Fair, really, fair. this is a, this is a this is a great thing overall, in my opinion, because now with us here, you can truly serve 100% of the vehicles uh, that uh, are on the road. Um, a lot of people think, you know, having either a Tesla or a Electrify America, a ChargePoint, um, any other third-party uh, charging operator, you just check the box and you say. I, electric vehicles can charge here, but in reality and 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 practice, that that's not actually the case. You would need a Tesla uh, uh, supercharger, and you would need some type of universal component as well. So now, with us coming here, um, in addition to the uh, quote unquote universal chargers uh, that are on site, 100% of the electric vehicles on the road uh, can take a char can can fill up their uh, their batteries. In case if we moved it to a less visible area. I, I share my members' concerns, and that's all I really had. And hopefully, we can maybe expound on it a little bit. That's all I had, Madam Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Brenda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Right, so I'm counting these. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So is that is that serving twelve cars or twenty four cars? Uh, that would be 12. So the design, uh, we call it like a fishbone design. So you would pull in from either side of, of that parking aisle there to, to be able to charge. Okay. Um, you know, I, I can appreciate you wanting the visibility and, you know, kind of the advertisement having Tesla name, like right as you enter the mall. But, you know, again, mirroring what everyone else has said, um, it's, I don't want to call it an eyesore, but it's just not very attractive in my eyes. Um, you know, I would be concerned about the white cabinets. White cabinets look awesome. Um, but, you know, like a parent with toddlers, that changes pretty quickly, um, you know, over time. And people, you know, unfortunately, you know, can tag or, you know, graffiti them, uh, which would be a concern. Um, 
So uh, I liked the idea of the enclosure at Linfield. Uh, the other idea, if it has to be at that location, which again, I'm not super excited about, um, is I don't know if you're familiar with um, the signage over the native uh, native collection, you know, where we are trying to preserve, you know, kind of the beauty and, and really, you know, redefining this, this small area. Maybe it's an opportunity um, to kind of hide it sign you know signage that says you know welcome to Burlington Mall and then have that cabinetry or some of that behind Brady I, I sent you a picture I don't know if you saw that yes Brenda I'll pull that up right now thanks and uh, you know it's really just for those who aren't familiar with what the, the signage that I'm referring to but you know it if you really wanted to have that Tesla sign, it's, you know, welcome to the Burlington Mall, sponsored by Tesla or something. I don't know, in small writing. Uh, again, I'm just trying to think of some out-of-the-box ideas um, on something else that could potentially be done. You know, something that's clean, nice, it would hide it. We don't really have signage like that at the mall. Um, again, just a thought, but I, I, I think we can do better on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, um, I'm not gonna take much time because I'm gonna echo a lot of the same things that my fellow board members have said. Um, I do not agree with the location of those white cabinets. I don't think that they're attractive. I agree with Brenda that they will become less attractive as time goes by. I do think they could be repositioned somewhere else. I'm going to ask you and Justin to get together and try and find someplace else where you can position these where they'll be less, less um, in your face as you were pulling into palm. Whether you put them into the parking field in the island and enclose it, or if you move it to the, the location that Joe suggested or a different location, I think that you need to spend some time figuring out a way to make this more attractive. Um, I like Brenda's idea about the signage. I'd have to see something. Um, you could also go and look at what they've done over in Northwest Park with their um, electric units that are printed to you could turn that into a sign. I would not suggest it be a Tesla sign. I would suggest it be a welcome to the Burlington Mall kind of sign. Um, but I, I do think that this is not something that I could support in its current configuration in its current state, the way it's shown to us. I also um, share the frustration of my fellow board members that this is proprietary just to Tesla, and I understand that's not anything that you can do anything about. I just am expressing that frustration. So I think you know where we stand, and I'm going to ask that you go back and try and find um, either different locations or more attractive ways to package this because I think you're hearing a pretty strong message from all the board members that we don't like what we're seeing. We don't have a problem with having Tesla charging stations. Um, although I do question 12, that seems excessive to me, but we can discuss that at the next meeting. Um, but I think you're finding that we all are, are on the same page in terms of the location and the aesthetics. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just one one question I had, um, so is it strictly the white cabinets uh, and switch gear, or is that, since that utility transformer is green and um, you typically see them? I think it's all, to, I think they're all problematic, and I think you could find a way to package them or hide them or something to make it all look better. The white ones are a little more um, Glaring, I think, but that might also just be in the picture. I don't know what it would look like in real life. So, okay. So we are not voting on this tonight. We are gonna continue this to our January meeting. Do you have any other questions about what we're looking for before we move on to the next item? Madam Chair, I just wanna clarify quickly. Um, that, you know, and I, I'm looking at Justin saying I, that I'm sure he would love to have a native collection sign. This is Burlington Mall and um, freestanding signs, but freestanding signs and BG are problematic. Um, okay. I think we are open to having that conversation, um, but I don't think the planning board can change the bylaw to, for this particular use to have a sign as such. Um, you know, whether it's some sort of other aesthetic or wall that a sign will go on at some point in time, then sure we can talk about that. But I um, just wanted to clarify that. And I, I appreciate um, the picture um, from Member Rappaport. I just wanted to 
um, just if they don't come back with it, it's not them. It's it's really the constraints okay. of the zoning bylaw. So um, I wanted to mention mention that. And then the second piece that um, I think what we're looking at in terms of what they have control over um, more so than yeah, I think the green transformer is going to be where the they have a little bit less control over that. We've tried to tell electric companies and where we want them in site plans for as long as I've been here, and you can probably attest for longer than that. Um, so I, I just want to also say that I think the Tesla pieces of hardware are going to be easier to manage to find different alternatives for them, than necessarily the transformer from, from is it Eversource or National National Grid that is right there? Eversource. Yeah, so um, we've maintained anyway, just, to still make those look more attractive and you can look at what they've done down at Northwest Park. Yeah, of course, I just wanted to kind of put in context what is possible by them before the next. Thanks. Okay, thank Madam you. Chair, do you yes. want a motion to continue? I do. Thank you, Paul. I guess the my board meeting of January 7th. Yes, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I just want to, to take item seven C through K together and out of order for discussion purposes. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, this is a lot to read. <laughs> so, um, how am I going to approach this? Okay. Do you want me to summarize it for you? That would be great. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yes, lots of special permits. So um, these are all public hearings. The applicant, um, the location is 300 Summit Drive. The applicant is the Guterres company. And the special permits are as follows. Uh, special permits pursuant to section 4271, light manufacturing or processing plants, prototype manufacturing and prototype manufacturing. Section 4 laboratories engaged in research, experimental, and testing activities, including but not limited to the fields of chemistry, electronics, engineering, geology, non biologic medicine, and physics. Uh, section 42741 Life Science laboratories, is, laboratories engaged in research, prototype manufacturing, experimental, and testing activities, including but not limited to fields of pharmaceuticals, biomedical technologies, and engineering, life systems technologies, and environmental and biomedical devices. Um, Section 42742, life science laboratories engage in manufacture of life science technology and medicine for commercial production to the market, including but not limited to the fields of pharmaceuticals, biomedical technologies and engineering, life systems technologies, environmental, environmental biomedical devices. Section 4329, parking garages and parking structures for more than three vehicles, including both enclosed and open garages. Section 43215, storage and disposal of oil, fuels, and petroleum. And finally, section 726, special permit for increasing the maximum parking space requirements for non-specific, non-residential, and non-educational uses. And finally, an application for approval of a site plan for 300 Summit Drive, the same applicant, the Guterres Company. Thank you, Kristen. Appreciate that. Um, okay, who is here representing the Guterres Company tonight? Do I see Bob? Yep, uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair. Members of the board, for the record, Robert Beckley, Raymond Bronstein. I have with me this evening uh, Scott Weiss from the Guterres Company and Will Park from Sims Maney McKee, Sites Civil. Uh, we've been before the board, it seems, for the last uh, eight or nine months from one form or another <laughs> to reposition this uh, piece of property. Um, I hope we're down to the final uh, acts this evening. Um, the last meeting, we had some homework assignments. 
uh, from uh, a couple of the board members to look at some questions. Um, and I think that we have addressed those. I, I don't know if Scott or, and or Will want to summarize what we've done since the last meeting, but I, I think we've addressed some of the concerns or issues that, I want to say they were concerns, but some of the ask that the, uh, the board had at the last meeting. So maybe I'll turn it over to Scott. You're on mute. Okay. Yep, sure. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Bob, and uh, to the members of the board and chair. Um, uh, as Bob said, uh, there were several comments that were made. Uh, we were concurrently uh, under review with the Conservation Commission as well. We've revised and updated the plans and submitted them to the board. I can just run through quickly some of the uh, major, um, quote unquote, major updates and modifications that were made um, and some of the questions that were asked and some of the items that were covered. Um, if I can share my screen, I'll, I'll just flip through them quickly. Um, okay, if this works, are you able to see my screen? Yes. yes. Love it when it works. Um, okay, uh, so uh, just quickly, one of the um, uh, main items that uh, was asked, I think uh, might've been Kristen uh, had asked about uh, bike path and accommodation on the site. We do, as we talked about it before, have paths around the entirety of the property. And we are specifically including a bicycle path, um, uh, meaning, you know, not just a sidewalk, but a wider pathway across the entirety of the site that will connect um, to both um, Summit Drive uh, at the bottom right of the page, as well as to line up for a potential uh, future connection to the south if, if one is ever available um, onto adjacent property. So, so we do have uh, full bicycle accommodation across the site as we go through. Um, uh, Moving on, uh, we have what has been uh, coined, uh, I believe, as the, uh, if it is ever to be built, the Raymond Ramp, um, where we are looking to connect um, the to uh, Route 3 North, essentially. Um, as we've uh, indicated, we're not allowed to connect a private property to the highway, and the DOT has been opposed to this. But if it were to happen, as we've uh, outlined in the past, um, we would connect from, from uh, the Summit Drive, which is a public roadway, to the highway, roughly in the configuration that's, that's outlined here um, uh, across the site. And what we are doing is providing a, the reservation of what could be an easement area um, to allow for that connection across the property to the highway uh, in the future as well. Um, so that, that would be accommodated and included, uh, as well. Uh, the next, uh, item, there was, uh, some comments, I think, uh, from member Gaffney, uh, about, uh, the, uh, landscaping and, and, uh, enhancing the buffer, um, between the site and, and, um, views from the north from the highway. And enhancing that, what we have done, and my computer now seems to be doing some ghosting, uh, so I'm not sure how well this will work. Um, but we did enhance and uh, increase both shade trees and evergreens in and along the edge of the property in in this corner area to help uh, screen. Uh, and then to beef up shade trees and, and evergreens throughout the site in this area so we can create a, a more dense screening so your views from the, from the highway are going to limit your ability to see the parking deck or actually even see the parking lot um, because it will be more heavily screened. Um, the building will obviously create a, a limited view corridor as well. And then we've also added uh, um, some additional plantings within the detention ponds and have additional uh, plantings along the uh, opposite edge of, of the site as well to help uh, screen 
uh, the view. So you will have a view of the building from the highway, but beyond that, it will be tough to see much of anything else uh, with, with all these plantings uh, going through there. Um, with that, because uh, I'm getting uh, some weird views uh, on my screen, I'm going to stop sharing and hopefully that. <laughs> We're, we're not uh, getting weird views on our screen. Oh, well, so I've been having a problem lately when I uh, do a screen share where everything stays on my screen all at once. So when I switch from one plan to another, I still see the both plans overlaid on top. So it, it's confusing for me. Um, but uh, um, with that, we've also made modifications to enhance um, and, and outline a uh, construction sequence. Uh, as we talked about before, that's been included on the plan so that uh, no disturbance to the existing detention pond can occur until the new pond is in place, um, as well as uh, um, a number of other other uh, Conservation Commission comments uh, to address drainage and um, the operations uh, there. So all of that has been incorporated. Uh, I know that some of the other items will be, you know, clearly identified as part of the um, decision document, but uh, we've addressed uh, the comments that have been made along the way uh, as well. There's probably some additional items. I know we had talked about a, a, a revised planting plan that would be subject to review. We did, uh, in addition to some of those plants, plantings, we also have revised to make sure that it is uh, all native species, uh, um, uh, local and uh, more drought tolerant type species and try to limit areas where any irrigation would be required um, as well. So with that, I'll turn it over back to you, Madam Chair, for any uh, questions or comments. Thank you, Scott. Um, Kristen, is there anything you wanted to add before I turn this over to the board? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, we have a decision drafted for you um, to consider this evening. Um, we have, I don't know, I feel like I've been talking about this site for years um, at this point and lots and lots of different iterations. And I think we found the best, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, in my opinion, I think um, what ended up here over the many years of conversation, I think is very good for Burlington. Um, and I think, you know, we've had a lot of conversations to, you know, make everything that we see up here um, better. And I think this is definitely um, the conversations we've had so far have improved the site. Um, I appreciate Scott kind of talking about the phasing and the, you know, making sure that the detention, um, the detention structure is constructed as one of the first things as you, as you're removing the other one. Um, and also, you know, I, I anticipate that we'll probably see a lot of kind of site preparation um, I mean, hopefully with everything going on, we can, you know, see site preparation and a building going up soon. And I think we all hope for that, but um, <clears throat> I appreciate um, one, the concerns that we've had all along, just making sure that any proposed access connections are not impeded by any proposal. Um, the bike path connection, I think is something that we've been working toward connecting with Lexington um, into Burlington, I, we've made strides in other pieces, whatever we can do and make pieces along the way. I did mention at the last meeting in terms of um, improvements, mitigation and improvements along Middlesex Turnpike Corridor, we've been very fortunate over the years um, with the different developments as to kind of who went first, who did which improvements, but um, Gutierrez has really done quite a bit of the improvements, especially along this corridor and aligning, realigning the Wheeler Road intersection if um those of you remember in 2005 when we were talking about these kind of really weird tractor trailer turns and you know I, I feel like we just saw those like the potential collision sections it was dots all over the screen and i think we've done come a long way from those days so so anyway we have um i'm talking way too much but we um feel comfortable with the proposal um i the i the one thing i if i missed it i apologize but um Scott, did you touch upon um, Ernie's question about the um, parking spaces and potential reserve spaces and can deal with that question? Uh, anyway, I, we have a condition that can kind of get to that point as well, or we, we will be crafting one. So um, just wanted to address that, but otherwise we're all set and um, we uh, have no more comments. 
Okay, thank you, Kristen. Um, this is Barbara again. I'm not going to run through the whole list of planning board members because I don't. Uh, we have discussed this at previous meetings in quite a bit of detail, so um, I don't think we need to go through everybody and that everybody feels like they have to say something, even if they're in agreement. So I'm just going to ask: Are there any planning board members that want to ask a question or make a comment on what was just presented? Uh, I do, Barbara. Paul, please go ahead. Paul, uh, yes, that that uh, the aesthetics of that building are going to be ve are very important because when you come down Route Three from the north, that's what you're going to see, and it uh, continually upsets my stomach to see that big Las Vegas sign <laughs> when you're coming down. So I want to be sure that there's special attention paid to what that building is going to look like when you're coming down Route 3, both uh, during the day and in the evening. And by the way, com uh, compliments to the staff and everybody. I think we've done a really good job so far in, in coming to a completion with this, as long as they're aiming. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul. I would agree. I think the aesthetics of that building will be very important, and and I think um, it probably goes without saying that we're not going to want another big, giant, artistic sign. <laughs> yes. So you know, um, are there any other planning board members that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Bill. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I would. I would hope that the building actually gets located such that. It blocks that sign, so that may be an opportunity here. Yeah, good idea. Uh, so it could be high enough, and maybe just catch a little bit of it at the top of the of the of, you know, of the uh, the middle floor section up there. So that might be okay. And then the only people that see that sign are people that in that complex, which you know it's going to be banging it at a high luminous uh, off the buildings anyway. So you can kind of it's, it's like fireworks and it changes up there. Um, <laughs> my only question is on the uh, decision. Uh, I, I would ask that we put in uh, the condition I, uh, I had mentioned about the uh, construction fence uh, not having any uh, words or graphics on it. I don't see that in the uh, decision that's uh, been proposed. Good catch, thank you, Bill. And yeah, then the only other, that. yeah, the only other thing is with regard to the connection to 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 Ruti North, uh, the Raymond ramp. Uh, the language in here is fairly soft, um, and again, so what what I uh, if I think back to other th times that we said, well, let's plan to do this and then things fall by the wayside, for example, uh, the intersection of South Bedford Street and Cambridge Street with North Northeastern. Uh, we're going to we're going to widen the road. Everything's going to happen there. It's going to be great. Don't worry about it. Um, and, and, oh, it's still in the know. plan. Yeah, it's in the plan. Yeah, and the building's up. I was at, I was at, I was at the uh, park, uh, uh, as the Mary Cummings Park the other day, and my kids are going, what is that? And you know, we could have done such a much better job in the building, but notwithstanding that, the traffic, the building's done, the building's up in, in the plan. And again, if, if, if there's been a uh, certificate of occupancy, then the plan should say what happened on the other side and it hasn't been done. So again, it's, I think the language here is fairly soft. If the MAT dot chooses to this type of language, I think what we need to do is to really uh, put in uh, additional language uh, to be stronger, to say maybe something like the town of Burlington strongly recommends, uh, you know, the access to that, um, and will uh, will uh, need to work with the applicant to make that happen, to, and and put in things like instead of saying we know that MassDOT doesn't want to, we hear that and you said it before, but again, what I mentioned before is how do other people deal with things like this? How how are there maybe different ideas? To make it happen such that the mat dot's going to be comfortable with it, like a traffic light, like California, when you have heavy traffic, to make sure that the traffic on those off ramps are going to be fine. And I, I'm not sure that uh, that's been discussed at mass dot, but maybe you know it's that type of thing that should really be uh, in there to say you know to consider items and uh, you know to tie it a little bit harder because otherwise it's going to go forward and then you know get the easy way out. And mass dot says no, and then everybody goes away. So it, it's just. If we can put in some some more uh, uh, harder language, I think, in there to tie it, so that's got to happen. If it doesn't happen, let's come back and let's figure out has everything been mentioned to Mass Dot about thinking about uh, different ways to implement it versus just saying that they said no. Madam Chair, may I respond to that? 
Yes, please. Um, uh, Bill, a couple things. One, uh, it really, uh, what, what the applicant is proposing here is maintaining the, the mechanics so that that could happen. I understand. It's really in, in, the, in the town's court. The town has more leverage with the state to force them to bend their policy to permit that connection. What we're saying is that if the town is, success, is successful with that, then we have we have provided the the entry point or the exit point to to make that a reality. Mm -hmm. It really should be the town driving that uh, debate. My concern about having it tied to a certificate of occupancy, even though uh, or some type of uh, penalty for the developer, we're, 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 we have no power to make that happen other than to permit the possibility of it by preserving the land or that connection. Mm -hmm. What that will do is impact very adversely the ability to finance the project because someone's going to look at that and say, well, what have you done on that? It's an open-ended uh, obligation. You haven't satisfied it. Uh, and, I, and that puts a burden on the ability to market or, sell or finance that building. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm more of the position that uh, the, you're looking for incentive there. So again, Bob, you just put it back into the towns and I say, so who in the town is going to be doing that? And it's going to be nobody. So if there's some sort of condition onto the, uh, this activity, Bob, with a lot of your influence, you have, you know, your large G's into the town and into the state helps us do that. Otherwise, it just falls away and nobody. Well, I, I don't want to speak for Scott. I, I think that if the town were to support that, that I don't think the uh, the applicant would be adverse to cooperating with the town uh, to make that a reality, and and, and the town the applicant is providing the, the point of access to make it a reality. Uh, I guess what I'm talking about is is who's driving it from the town standpoint. If you're throwing it over the fence, and so if I go to the staff, who's going to be driving that? Who's taking that action as a high priority for the town to get this tied into it before before everything just goes away and everybody goes to sleep on it? Well, I mean, I think we can, to the extent that anything's needed from this property, but I think the kind of efforts that we had when we talked about this a while ago with, with Ken Gordon and the selectmen and others that were kind of behind really trying to figure out um, the, the options and getting support behind it, I think, um, to Paul's credit, and Paul, Paul Raymond, who brought it up, and I think we had a nice chat with Deval Patrick when Patrick was here, for third out, but you know, I really think it's getting behind. You know, we can start the conversation, but it's not. It's really the the town and the selectmen and others to help lead that charge um, with those that can help us have the discussion, such as Ken Gordon and others at the state level. Yeah. So I guess what I look for is then. So who 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 owns that, and who's going to say this is on my goals and objective for the next year? Is it where is that written down? Where's the conditions of that? And that's. So it's separate from this, so it's thrown over the fence to the town. And, um, you know, if you can kind of show, you know, show me that, then I'm good. Otherwise, I think the applicant can really maybe leverage the town. You've got a lot of influence, you, uh, Bob, you and Scott, to say, hey, this is going to happen, town. Selectmen, help us here, because we're, we're, we're good members of the town. So we need, you know, we need your help to push this through, because we want to get it through. Otherwise, there's no one in the town that's going to do that, right? Or am I wrong? Well, I, I think that the applicant can work with the town, but I don't think we can control the debate. I mean, if 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 I could be presumptuous and say that, you know, that the the planning board or the uh, the the engineering or DPW could make a recommendation, or your state representatives um, uh, could uh, could suggest that this is an objective that should be vetted at the state, and I, I believe. The applicant and others in town would probably get behind it. Uh, you know, as, as you probably, I think you announced it at the last meeting, a similar event occurred with respect to the MWRA, where the town had an initiative and a lot of people got behind that to make that a reality. And I do think that the applicant here would, by their encumbering their property to permit that connection, has shown their commitment to the to the effort. and. What we need is someone from the town to take that initial step, and I think that the applicant would work with them. But we can't. We can't dictate. We can't dictate who's going to do it at the town. I I agree with that. If I may, um, I do think it might make sense to to strengthen the language a bit on this and just 
um, state that the applicant will, you know, at, as the town moves forward along with this, because I do think it has to be a town initiative working together with the state that the applicant will participate and advocate for this. I don't think they have the power to do much more than that. Yeah, we I, just to throw in there, Madam Chair and Member Gaffney, uh, we as we said before, we are we're completely aligned on this. Um, our, this would be a home run to have that kind of access, and uh, you know, it, from from all of these properties up on the summit, and uh, to be able to have that kind of direct access. Um, so we're we're willing to work with you guys in the town, uh, it, whoever it is, Kristen, DPW Engineering, um, to to you know pursue uh, the opportunity for this. Uh, it has been asked a number of times. Um, we have not been successful. Um, but we we are more than more than happy to try to continue to work on that front. Our position solely is somewhat limited, uh, as as Bob would say. You know, without the backing and the full backing from the town, it, it would be a very long long road. And I do think <laughs> it that end road. It makes sense for us, the planning board and the board of selectmen, to have a meeting about this along with um, our new development. Um, director Melissa, I think um, it's something that has to come. I think it has to come from the town side, and then again, like Kristen said, working along with our representatives because we're going to have they're we're going to need them to help us pressure the state to move forward on this. I think it would be great to put some language in there that the applicant will advocate and support that effort, and I I have no doubt that they will do that because it's to their advantage. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure we can do much more than that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Who was that? That was Paul. I just wanted to make a suggestion. Oh, oh. Our state representative has been very helpful to us in many times, mm -hmm. and I think that would be a good place to start because he has leverage that we don't, and he's been very helpful in organizing meetings and so forth previously. So if we're looking for some place to start, I would suggest that uh, Ken would certainly help us out with it. Thank you. You know, I, I would suggest, Madam Chair, that maybe the applicant, uh, Scott, myself, and maybe someone from the staff will reach out to Representative Gordon and and uh, maybe uh, see if we can now with the access provided and a, mm -hmm. in a may perhaps a change in orientation as to what's going to happen in the future in terms of the need for development and economic uh, uh, stability that maybe we'll get more of a receptive ear. I, I thank you. I think that's a good idea. I also think, um, and, and I don't want to get too far off into this because it's kind of right. not really related to this, what we're voting on tonight, but it also might make sense for us to form a committee to look into this. And it could be someone from planning, someone from building, Melissa, Kristen, you, Bob, and, and, and try to put something together, including and bring Ken in and, and have a committee who's, who's focused on this effort. Um, but it, I don't think we could tie it directly to this particular application that's in front of us right now. And I would also include Middlesex 3 on that because they have that transportation subcommittee that that would be a regional project, so. That's right, that's right. Okay, so are there any other planning board members that wanted to speak on this or are we ready to vote? All right, sounds like we're ready to vote. Um, we have a number of things we need to vote on, right? To do this. All right. We'll certainly amend, the, amend it to the comments that are received tonight. Yes. And okay, so I'm looking right now for a motion to close the public hearing on these matters. So moved. And seconded by Mike. Thank you. Um, roll call. So, Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Mpemba. Yes. Member Clark Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rathport. Yes. All right. So we have a bunch of motions now. Who wants to take them on? Well, the first one is close a public hearing on these matters. We just did that. We so now we're looking. And then yes. the next one is to approve the request for the Gutierrez Company for special permit pursuant to section 
uh, 4.2.7.1 light manufacturing or processing plants, 72711 research and development, 7274 laboratories engaged in research, 72741 life science laboratories engaged in page six. Just a moment. I'm on seven. I got this late, and so I didn't have a chance to get to it as much. Ever. If somebody wants to pick it up on six, I'm having trouble getting that page separated. Here we go. Was that here? Mike, Bill, somebody? No, that's okay. That, that's okay. the uh, uh, public hearing application for approval is on five. Jesus. <laughs> okay, here's six. Here we go. Uh, we're on to 4.2.7.4.2. Life Sciences Laboratories engaged in manufacture, 4529 parking structures and or park, parking garage and then parking structures, 45215 storage and disposal of uh, oils and 7.2.6 special permit for increasing the maximum parking, Article 6 of the zoning bylaw of the town of Burlington to allow, uh, no, that's four, four. Uh, allow for the development of 235,000 square foot commercial office and life science uh, building to uh, laboratory buildings and to associated structures parking below buildings and freestanding and uh, associated improvements located in the high rise industrial zoning and water resource district 300 summit drive contained in exhibit a attached thank you Paul. is it a second seconded by mike thank you mike um chairman larue yes Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Do we need to vote next on the site plan, Kristen? Is that right? Okay. That is correct. So Chair, I'm make a motion. You don't need to close the public hearing again, though. You closed, okay. you closed it on all matters, so you just need to vote on the site plan application. Thank make you. a motion to approve the request of the Gutierrez Company applicant and Arthur J. Gutierrez Jr. and Gloria Gutierrez, trustees of Burlington, January 1998 Realty Trust, property owner for approval of a site plan application for property located at 300 Summit Drive property or premises. The construction of a 235,000 square ultra minus square foot commercial office and life science laboratory building with associated structured parking, both below and freestanding, and associated site improvements as reflected on the site plan entitled Burlington Summit 300 Summit Drive, Lot 300 Burlington Mass Site Plan, prepared by Sims, Miami, and McKee Associates, SMMA, dated September 8th, 2020 consisting of 12 sheets. The site plan decision is subject to the following provisions, terms, and conditions. As amended. Second. As amended. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay, um, Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impumba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank you for your and, uh, consideration. Forward, thank you. And we look forward to learning about who's going to be <laughs> building coming some, sometime soon. Good luck. Thank you, we all. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, hope everyone has a great, uh, great and safe and healthy holiday and new year. Thank you. You as well.
Thank okay. you. Thank okay, you. folks, we are moving on and we're actually switching all the way to page 13. Moving on to item 7A, a continued public hearing application for approval of an amendment to a definitive subdivision plan 108 Muller Road. Edward and Yelena Ivitskaya are the applicants. Um, before we jump into that, I just want to quickly go over how we're going to work this. Um, we have discussed this project at great length, and I think we need to narrow our focus tonight and be um, very focused so that we can move forward. Um, since our last meeting, we have received additional information from attorney Rachel Bame and from attorney Brian Levy. I'm going to ask each one of them to give us a very, very brief, as in two to three minute um, summary of what it is that they presented since the last meeting. Um, so we're going to start that now, and, and then we'll have a, a few minutes to ask questions. Is Attorney Bame here? This is uh, Neil and Sue Russell from 26 Cormier. We did not anticipate that this was going to happen. So okay, that's not okay. Anticipate. That's not necessary. Um, the 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 information from your attorney has been distributed to all the planning board members. We just wanted to give your attorney a chance if she wanted to say anything specifically about that. Thank you. Um, so sure. that's not necessary. So okay, um, uh, Mr. Levy, is Attorney Levy of, here? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, so we'll give you about two minutes to summarize what it is that you've presented since our last meeting, the new information. Yes, thank you very much. Um, at the last session of the public hearing, um, there were several, there were, there were two major rationales offered um, for denial of this application. So I wanna address those two points, that's all, Madam Chair, if I may. Um, the first is that, that was mentioned at the hearing last time, was that somehow the board should be sort of relooking at the entire project and revisiting the original decision. Um, we would submit to you and the, and the board members that that's legally erroneous, that the town council has advised that that really can't be done here and that is not proper. Um, it is also not what your regulations say. Um, this, the regulations that apply here talk about quote, evaluating the proposed amendment, unquote. And the only amendment here is shifting a driveway about 10 feet. I think also, uh, Madam Chair, that this would set a dangerous precedent. Anybody that came in front of the um, planning board with an amendment would then expose themselves, um, if the precedent were set here, to a complete revisiting of their application, um, chilling those applications, particularly where you might have, like you just had, uh, a very large commercial or residential subdivision. I don't think that that's what the regulations intend or what this board intends. The second point is that at the last session that there were several comments made that the shifting of the driveway might have some sort of detrimental impact uh, to the neighborhood. Um, there's no record evidence to support that. We're shifting the driveway about 10 or 15 feet. The evidence before the board shows a minor grade change it shows more than adequate um, stormwater controls. It's favored by the Conservation Commission. It pushes the impervious pavement further away from the pond and it saves mature trees. The comments that have been made uh, by the neighbors about negative impacts are speculation. They're entitled to their views, but they're not entitled to their own facts. There's no facts that they put in the record and they've had six months to retain a consultant to comment on we, what we've submitted or provide their own fresh commentary to address stormwater, grading, and any other issues. And that simply hasn't been done. The only okay. thing in the record are the comments of our consultant. We'd urge the, urge the board to approve the modification. Thank you, Attorney Levy. Okay, what I'm gonna ask my fellow board members, are if I'm gonna ask if anyone has questions specifically on the letters that we've received from attorney Bame or from attorney Levy and only on that at this time, we're gonna discuss more later, but does anyone have any questions specifically on those two documents that we received previous to this meeting, but after the last meeting? Okay, seeing none, what, um, what we're gonna do now then is close the public hearing and then we the board members will discuss um, our decision. Okay. So I am looking for a, 
a motion to close the public hearing, and then we will continue to discuss the decision that we're going to come to. Can I get that from anyone? A motion to close the public hearing. Thank you, Mike. Second, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman of Pemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay, thank you everyone. So now we're gonna move on to the, the part of this where we debate our actual decision. And I wanna make a couple of things I want to make one thing very clear, and then I want to ask staff to present some, um, to clarify some things for us. What I want to make very clear is what we are discussing tonight and what we are voting on tonight is moving the driveway. And that is all we are debating and deciding on tonight. We are not opening this all up to the previous decision on the subdivision. We are just discussing moving the driveway. So let's please stay very focused on that. Um, what I would like our staff to do is um, just give us an overview of the implications of moving the driveway, because I do believe that we have some, uh, an additional photograph that I know really was um, impactful for me that I want all of you to see. And we can talk about the changes that result just from moving the driveway. So I'm gonna ask, staff to give us a quick update on that and then we'll, I'll open it up to everybody to ask questions or discuss. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for Brady for reading our minds without saying. Um, anyway, um, so we left the last meeting um, with, or what I left the last meeting with was a direction from the planning board uh, that the new location is more problematic than originally approved from the originally approved location because of drainage grading and the effect to neighbors based on the information that the planning boards received and discussion at the planning board. Um, so that's the direction that I really took from the members and I, I would you know invite members to speak more about that. Um, but so in looking at that, we took a hard look at what has been submitted. <clears throat> took a look at, you know, really comparing and contrasting the originally approved driveway location and the new driveway location and looking at, um, again, all the reports that have been submitted um, and information from the applicant as well as, as others. So uh, the photo that um, the chairman references is is one, it's, it's literally a Google street view. It's, you know, anyone could get it. But I just wanted to start here to explain kind of where, and actually, oh, no, you didn't want to zone out, zoom out. So um, what you're looking at right now, the house on the right side of the screen is 26 Cormier Road, which is the Russell's house. The house out of view, but directly to the left is 30 Cormier Road. The original driveway location is, and I don't have a doctored up photo because I we don't have all those flashy graphics tools that um, some companies do, but the original driveway location is roughly in the location of the two trees that you see on the left side of the screen. Um, uh, and the new location is to the right on going on to the hill. And if, if you zoomed in a little bit, if there's, you can kind of see a small newly planted tree. Um, it's right about in that location. Um, so, Okay, so we said, we kind of looked at that. We looked at the original plan, um, the grading on the original plan and the grading, especially the grading that was submitted on the proposed driveway plan and profile that was um, submitted um, kind of midway through this project at the request of the planning board to understand a little bit more about the grading and drainage um, after the neighbors kind of had mentioned concerns about, about those grades. So um, looking at those, those grades, what we, um, and I guess how I wanna do this is I wanna kind of briefly give you our rationale. I wanna hear from the members a little bit in terms of kind of their initial thoughts and then I'll get, I'm certainly happy to get into the specifics of 
of, you know, kind of more of the numbers and the actual decision, but I want to open it up a little bit before I get to, to that. Um, we did send around a draft decision um, attached to the same email that the staff report was attached to. So in that, um, if, when I'm speaking, if you want to go ahead and find that email and or those of you that have a hard copy, find that hard copy. Um, feel free to go ahead and do that because we'll be walking through that at, uh, shortly. Um, but anyway, so what we really concluded was in the original location is a lot more in line with the existing grades on site and less than that need for modification to kind of do a little bit of a you know cut to a flat area in the middle of the hill that would increase and Brady, I don't know if you have do you have the cross section? Yeah, I can grab that for you. That shows the kind of cutting and filling um in terms of to create that driveway location and the 20 foot easement that's closer to the, this the proposed location moves the driveway into the 20 foot easement that is on 26 Cormier Road. Um, and within that 20 foot portion, the, dry, the 15 foot proposed driveway, you know, you need to have somewhat of a, a one, one, two percent grade. Um, can Brady, can you go scroll down to the section, the piece that says section, well, profile and sections? Thank you. Um, and then zoom in a little bit. Um, if you can, okay, I'll start here. So, um, okay, where was I going? Oh, so it moves it moves it into the 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 easement, the twenty foot easement on twenty six. Um, if you look at the and the, what you're seeing on screen now is part of the the plan that I just and report that I just referenced is the profile driveway plan and profile that was also um, submitted as uh, also with the storm water report um, that was submitted by AC are prepared by AC Nelson Cartography. So what you're looking at in the profile is from the right to the left, right to left is Cormier to the proposed lot B, which is the proposed lot. So coming in from Cormier Road, you're looking at about a 7%. So I'm sorry, let me back up. The red you're seeing is the existing grade. The black is the proposed grade. So you're coming in the 7% slope and to about the midpoint, and then you're traveling back down at a 3.7% slope toward the proposed lot B. And that's as you drive from, on the driveway from Cormier to the proposed lot. If you look at the profile section, section one, two, and three, and then Brady, if you can scroll over and zoom in, because I know it's super small and I'm not necessarily expecting anyone to read the numbers, but just follow the lines. If you can scroll over. Um, so those three sections are three separate points that were taken um, along the hill that I'm talking about. So you have the section one, two, and three, and I can get more more technical about the numbers, but you'll see there broke. There's the 15 foot center point, which is the driveway itself, and then the two side the two sides um, that are the in the easement, but not the pay, the it is permanent pavement, but paved area. So if you can see to create that more or less flatter area in the middle, you're creating a, a slope on each side, one coming down um, from 26 to a flat area and then going back down to 30, which are um, a lot steeper than the previous grades. And I don't have a report in cross section. We did have a stormwater report in the original, but not a cross section like this. So I don't have um, really apples to apples, but and that's why it was important to show the photo in terms of really understanding the existing grades in the previously approved location and the new location. Um, and so I guess right now is I want to highlight the, all that information and then um, kind of throw it back to the board. I know there was, again, concerns about what this would do to grading drainage. Um, as well as you know, vehicular travel along the, the this proposed driveway versus the other one. So, so with that, I guess, um, Madam Chair, I, I, before I get more technical into the decision, um, if throw back to the board a little bit more, is, is this kind of the direction to confirm that this is the direction and concerns that the board did have in in the path that 
that you kind of guided us at the last meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I thought this, this was really helpful for me. So I hope my fellow board members also found it helpful. It, it helped me understand the, the implications of moving the driveway, which is where we're supposed to be focused. So I'm gonna go through um, to our other, to my board members and, and see who wants to weigh in on this specifically on moving the driveway. Joe, uh, would you like yep, to weigh in? I, 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 yep, appreciate it, Madam Chair. I have a couple of comments and I just wanna preface my comments with the fact that, you know, there may have been a misunderstanding. I, I know Attorney Levy had said, you know, and I'm not sure if he was referring to me um, to say that, you know, in saying that we're trying to, you know, readdress the whole project. I think my, and I tried to verbalize what I was saying, you know, in the past meetings was that had this been part of the first proposal, I probably would have voted against it. Now, that's not trying to readdress the project. I think basically it's just me expressing the fact that my expressing my displeasure with this change um that that this is not a this, that had it been part of the original i i would not most likely not have voted in favor of it my concerns and i as i've stated in the past and and uh <clears throat> and i still have them even more so now that i've actually had an opportunity to see the profile but um my concerns are the, the topography and the grade changes here and I and I have a hard time seeing, you know, as much as they've told us that you know it's not, you know, runoff is not going to be a problem. We're not going to have issues with neighboring houses. I I don't I don't believe that. In my heart of hearts, I don't believe it. But but I've also once I was had the opportunity to see this profile and saw the grade actually saw the grade changes on the profile. You know, we've got you know you basically cut the road into this hillside and you know i think we, i think the grade you know going down to the road from the top of the hill is somewhat in the vicinity of a two foot a two foot drop over a two foot span and then you've got a roadway of about 15 feet with about a one percent grade and then you've got another two foot drop uh on the downside of that side that actually raises a little more even more concerns to me uh about a vehicle traveling on that you know, maybe at nighttime, you know, because, you know, we're not, there's no, there's no requirement to put pad rails or anything like that in there. But, you know, I know at nighttime, if you misjudge where the side of that roadway is, the side of that driveway is, you put, you put your tires off the side of that driveway and the car is going to roll. Um, and, you know, I mean, th these are people's properties that it will now be affecting. Um, you know, I understand is a, uh, you know, there's a, 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 uh, uh, an easement here, but that, you know, that if a car were to come off of that would now be affecting properties outside the easement. Um, you know, so my concerns only got greater when I had the opportunity to actually look at the profile of this, of, of the design of this, of this driveway. So um, that's where I am. And it, and it hasn't, you know, my, my thoughts haven't changed. They've only actually increased since I've seen that. Um, but I, for one, just wanted to clarify that, you know, when I talked about, when I spoke about, you know, this being part of the original project, it actually was just my reflection of how I felt about this change, not, not trying to readdress the whole project. All right. So. And that's I was not I trying to single you out, Joe. Just so you know, that's not that's not What's my that? intent at all. <laughs> What's that? That I was not intending to single you out at all. So. That was not oh, my no, intent. No, no. Anyway, I, no, actually, thank I, you. I, yeah, no, I mean, and, and quite honestly, I just wanted that opportunity to address, um, you okay. know, that comment from Attorney Levy as well. So, I okay, appreciate that. thank you, Joe. All right, thank you. Okay, um, Paul Raymond, would you like to speak about the repositioning of the driveway? Believe it or not, no. <laughs> I, I, I made okay. I made my feelings. I thought very clear as soon as this came up, and uh, they have okay. not changed one whit. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, Ernie Cavino. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, a, a a question for uh, or a couple of questions for staff. 
I, um, you know, my, my eyes were opened a little bit by reading through the draft decision. And in section seven, the second paragraph, where the draft decision talks about uh, the slopes, uh, there, there's a uh, stated there's some 64%, 56% slope along the driveway. Is is that, uh, and I'm not sure if I'm addressing Kristen or Liz or, or who, uh, does, is that at the edge of the driveway? Is is that what you're trying to, is so that the, what you're saying? So there? The slope, so as I mentioned, with the graphic that Brady had up, and, yeah. and I can certainly, um, share it again but uh is that it's it's the edge the edge of so there's the driveway coming in and then there's the drop coming down toward 30 and then holding up 26. there's a very steep grade over that two and a half foot outside on each it, side of the 15 foot on ground. each side of the 15 foot so if this was if if they had plenty enough room and plenty of room and we were doing this according to Hoyle or according to the book, uh, then we'd probably be looking for a retaining wall on one side and some sort of um, guardrail on the other side or something, I think. It, it, am, I, am I picturing that correctly, Kristen? Do you know what I- Yeah, do you know I mean, we, I mean? just showed, we just showed the, the profile and, and that's, I think what we were concluding was okay. that sl slopes that are that steep um would have we would be concerned about erosion issues um into the drive holding up the earth along there what type, i mean there's plantings right. okay. proposed we kind of question if plantings are even going to work here when consulting with some some folks in engineering and others it was you know to hold up a slope like this you're looking at potential retaining wall or riprap or stone or tie right. Right. you know a bunch okay. of things like that it's not very it's not very high. I mean, you're talking about a f not more than two feet, but it's still okay. Even that was my area, confusion. Okay, it's yeah. it is a very steep, but two feet at a really high grade is still still a high grade, and then two feet on the downhill side, as as Member and Pemba mentioned, oh. is a concern yeah. with you know yeah. with, Could... it's not very well lit and just a concern without any type of. Um, oh yeah, it could definitely be a catastrophe. Or... That car could roll like, off the side there pretty easily. Okay, sec my second question, Kristen, not to rush you along, but to rush you along. Uh, the, can you tell, do you have a general idea what the space is between the two trees I'm looking at uh, on this this picture, which I saw before, I've seen before, but I didn't realize what I, maybe what I was looking at. Do you, do you have any idea of the space between the two trees? Is that? Uh, I don't, but I do, I can tell you that um, I, I don't have an exact, I could get a plan out. Yep. And no, that's right. No, 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 no. Um, but no. I, I know when we discussed the original proposal, not part of this conversation, but the original proposal when we talked about it, that there was a desire to try to fit the driveway between the two trees. And I think it was a little bit too narrow and or it was, it could fit, but you know, you'd be right up against the tree. So you'd probably damage the tree. Um, so I think I I, I, rec I believe we may have lost one of the trees um, in the original proposal, but it, they were. I know we talked about um, trying to keep, okay. keep those two, and okay. I, I think they had said they'd try to work to keep those two in the original proposal. But um, right. I'm speaking okay. a little bit out of turn because I don't have that directly in front of me, and I don't have a plan to tell right. you exactly. Mm -hmm. But in terms okay. of your yeah. question, I think it was. It might be possible to go between those two. Um, in the original, so I, I apologize that I can't answer more. Today. Okay, so it's somewhere probably between fifteen and twenty feet is is would be a guess. Yes, I would say you're between no. you know eleven and thirteen or fourteen. But in the trees oh, look like okay. they're right next okay. to each other. They're not. They're very. They're stepped. Um, the where the okay, they're back, they're staggered. I okay. would say. Uh, I'd have to mm. grab the plan, but um, it's further back than the the one to the right. Okay, so uh, leaving the driveway in, so obviously leaving the driveway in the location based on this photograph, leaving the driveway in the location it was originally approved in will mean taking out one or two trees, but it will be much flatter than the other way. Okay, all right, you answered my questions. Thank you. Perfect.
Thank Thanks, you, Ernie. Ernie. Thank you. Um, Member Gaffney, do you have any questions yes. regarding the driveway? Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, you know, as I, I look here at the picture, I get the same picture that, um, that we're basically we're looking at here when I went to visit the site a number of times. And my concern again was the, uh, was the grade difference, um, you know, on the meeting of the 15th, uh, I had a back of a nap and calculation with regard to the, the relocation of the driveway from a couple of feet elevation from one to the other, but maybe a three or four feet to, uh, I think from uh, top to bottom was, uh, it looked like about 13 feet. So that's a fair, I mean, that's a huge, a great difference. And again, all the concerns uh, that uh, staff had talked about as well. So uh, thanks to them for the cross sections. It basically validates my back of the napkin calculations. And uh, yeah, I would uh, be consistent in the concerns that I had of the new driver being uh, more detrimental. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Mike Espeo. I'm all set, Madam Chair, thanks. Thank you, Brenda. I don't have anything additional to add, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I share the concerns that have been brought forward by my fellow board members regarding the grade. It does seem to me like this would require um, at least a retaining wall, and I'm concerned about a car veering off, especially um, because it will be narrow and it's a driveway, it won't be lit. I actually think that this um, presents a safety issue for the owner of the house who's going to be driving on that narrow driveway as well as the neighbor whose home and property could be affected. So I, I share that concern. All right. Um, that having been said, um, I think we have discussed this. Excuse me, Madam Chair. I, uh, I'm that? sorry. It's, this is Brenda. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, hi, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't know if you had seen some of the comments that were in the chat. Um, there is a, a comment from uh, Mr. Nelson. Um, I have not. Was that okay. before or after we closed the public hearing? It was after you closed the public hearing, and he's saying that the, the proposed driveway is to the left of the existing tree, the small tree on the hill. I just I just wanted to point that out, you know, so everybody was aware that there is commentary in the chat. That's all. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, and, and I also just wanted to, so I pre really appreciate the, the comment from um, uh, Al Nelson it, that I'm, it, you know, as I mentioned, I don't have graphically the, um, it is drawn out on the photo, but the small tree on the hill, I was pointing you to the small tree on the hill. Um, I, when I originally said at the right of the two larger trees and pointing you to the small tree kind of in reference to that general location. So he's saying it's on to the proposed driveway is the left of the small tree on the hill, which is roughly kind of in. Right. We're using the information that had been previously submitted in the report. So um, okay. I'm using the, the applicants. Um, analysis of the slopes, um, not, you know, I'm not providing new analysis that hadn't been submitted. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, I think we are ready to vote on this amendment. And again, it is just on the amendment, moving the driveway. Madam Chair, can I get into some a little more specifics of just kind of um, the decision a little bit? And do you mind if I share no, please. the decision I just wanted to kind of I wanted to I didn't want to I wanted you guys to make sure you had the opportunity to to, to win um go ahead before I kind of got into there so um Brady can I share what is it you're sharing or I don't have to share I could just read I guess that's the is it the decision itself yeah oh okay just the piece of the discussion. So, okay. um, so what we have for you is, I just wanted to kind of roll through what the format was, because there's a lot of it that's mm -hmm. isn't really the. Um, hold on, just a second. Let me. Okay. 
Okay. Can you see that? I'll start from the beginning. Can everyone see that? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, traditional kind of decision format, I'm gonna roll through the format um, and then really get to the conversation, but um, you already um, mentioned to close a public hearing. Uh, I just noted the these are the waivers, the waivers that were submitted from the original application, and I only bring them up not if anything is new. I bring them up in certain sections that may um, be modified by the um, the the new location. Uh, procedural history is typical, just to understand what we've done so far. Materials um, that have been submitted. Um, department comments about our comments uh, about our comments and other report. Um, uh, Members of the board that have been part of the um, the discussion, general information about who, where, what this has been, and the hearings, um, and the project. Um, I do have in a longer version that was also emailed to you. The section six of this um, is literally just sections of the planning board rules and regulations um, that. Um, that come into this, but they're cut and paste from um, from the rules and regs. So what I want to get into is the discussion and findings um, and this to this discussion and, and just verify and open for discussion and deliberation with the board as, as to this is the points that we're trying to make that the applicant seeks to modify the location of the previously approved driveway. And then and it's important to note, as you guys have talked about the differences between the driveways um to reach uh, proposal lot b um the original approved driveway location was proposed within the easement straddling both 26 and 30 cormier road the original driveway extended from cormier road traveling along similar grades to the existing topography to reach proposal lot b in the original review of the project the applicant did provide stormwater calculations prepared by a registered professional engineer the proposed amendment moves the driveway to the portion of the easement entirely within the property at 26 cormier road the materials submitted as part of this application by the applicant shows three distinct cross sections taken along the driveway. This area of the easement has cross slope of 7.5% in section one, 16.5, section two, and 30 in section three. And this is driving from Cormier to the, the property along the driveway itself. Um, the amended proposal to seeks to cut the slope to provide for a flat area to locate the driveway. The regrading need to achieve the flat area across the 15 feet within the 20 foot easement creates a situation where the edge of the easement on 26 from your property over the two and a half feet would have an 8%, 64 and 56% slope respectively in the three cross sections along the driveway. And then roughly 1% for the 15 feet across the drive and dip back down to a slope to 30 core mirror at 52, 68 and 56% respectively across the cross sections. These slopes are very steep and raise concerns about heavy erosion along the drive as well as safety concerns for vehicles on a narrow drive where there is, there's no lighting, retaining measures, fencing or guardrail proposed. This is also an area where the applicant proposes tree planting and it's questionable to us if the slope of this magnitude can handle even grass planting of any type, never mind tree planting without a complete washout. In addition, slopes like this may require some sort of measure to hold the soil back from erosion. Erosion here would have multiple detrimental effects, including erosion into the driveway, which would render the pervious pavement ineffective if not properly maintained. And erosion would cause drainage and stormwater runoff and create significant drainage issues to the property at 30 Cormier Road. Further drainage calculations were prepared by AC Nelson Cartography. However, the cross slope was not factored into the calculations, nor was the runoff calculated for the driveway in its steepest locations. I.e., the driveway enters from Cormier to 7% slope to about a midpoint where it crests and falls back to toward lot B. It is not clear that the calculations that the driveway, even if it's per, even in its permeable material, can handle the rate of infiltration traveling down to 7% slope. The rate of runoff being faster than the rate of absorption causes more runoff to the neighbors the proposed lot B and onto Cormier Road, inconsistent with the requirement outlined in section 11.1.1 .1 of the subdivision rules and regulations. Um, we also note that um, the calculations were not prepared by a professional engineer and therefore the calcs are not in compliance with the rules and regulations governed in the subdivision of land in Burlington section uh, in section six and section 11, where drainage calculations shall be prepared by a professional registered professional engineer and 
The planning board finds that the applicant has not provided adequate information to assess if the drainage system has been designed to ensure that the systems will function, and more importantly, the drainage system will not severely impact the neighborhood. In the proposed revised location of the driveway does not secure adequate provision of drainage. The revised layout creates undue harm to the properties of the 26 and 30 Cormier Road due to the unprotected steep grades and detraction from the attractiveness of the street layout and further detrimental to the existing environment and neighborhood. And therefore, the board finds that the proposed change in location of the driveway is significantly more detrimental and is not in compliance with many of the requirements of Section 11 of the Subject Revision Rules and Regulations. And I outline below, and I um, section um, 11. Most of section 11, as you guys are very well versed in, is that um, that we need to develop property in manner to maximize stormwater recharge on site, minimize direct overland runoff to adjoining streets and water courses. Uh, peak flows at the boundaries of the sub subdivision shall be no higher following development than before development. Um, in addition, all stormwater runoff flows at the boundaries of subdivision shall be no higher following development than than before. So it's, it's the whole discussion that we have at all of our projects of the pre and post and not creating additional or more um, runoff from projects than what they were experiencing before that. Um, and then moving into the final section, the board finds that the application does not meet the criteria of approval pursuant to the rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land in Burlington family to meet these criteria, the board must deny the application. The relocation of the driveway necessitates significant regrading of the area within the easement. The regrading proposes higher slopes from Cormier Road and significant cross slopes on either side of the new drive. There's no proposal to stabilize the slopes or create a retaining wall, nor area within the neighbor's property to regrade to pr properly construct the driveway without causing harm from increased erosion and stormwater runoff from the drive. The board finds that the originally approved location provides less harm and impact to the immediate neighbors and neighborhood, as well as to the applicant's property than the proposed modification of location within this amendment. Um, so with that, that concludes the decision other than some of the end pieces that we need to add um, into your, in terms of your actions. Um, and then the appendices, which just, again, repeat exactly just the plans that we've been discussing this evening. So, so with that, um, I, I open it again back up to the board for deliberation if there's things that um, you'd like us to modify or add to the decision. Um, again, all the information has been based on information that's been submitted throughout this process. Okay, thank yeah. you. Ernie? Madam Chair, so we don't, um, do you think maybe uh, uh, someone could make the motion and then we could discuss the motion rather than make it look like the public hearing is still open? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Do you know what I'm you saying? It, it looks, it, <laughs> I lost, you oh, lost. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, okay. If, someone, if someone made the motion, then we could have these discussions as discussion on the motion rather than... On the information uh, presented. Public, yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying because we have closed the public meeting. Right. Um, and, yes, I'm looking for language for the motion. Hold on one minute. Um, yes. I'll yeah. share. Pardon me? I, I can share the motion. I can I can just read it and ask someone to say so moved. How's oh, that? Okay. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I am looking for a motion to disapprove the request of Edward and Elena Yivitskaya, Mark Petro, and Renata Yivitskaya. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these names correctly. I'm sorry. The applicants for an amendment to definitive subdivision plan entitled Definitive Subdivision of Land in Burlington Mass, Muller Road, prepared by A.C. Nelson Cartography, dated June 16, 2020, consisting of three sheets reflecting the relocation of the 15-foot wide forest driveway, addition of existing trees, the addition of an existing landscaped area, and the addition of existing boulders. So that is the motion I am looking for. So moved. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, now to discuss the motion. Ernie, would you like to discuss? Uh, at, uh, my previous discussion was discussion on the motion, okay. sorry. 
Okay, fine. Is there anyone else that wanted to add anything specifically on the motion? Now that we've moved it. Okay, then perhaps we're ready to vote. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Let's have a roll call. Absolutely. Okay. So, Chairman LaRue? Yes. Vice Chairman Atemba? Yes. Member Clerk Raymond? Yes. Member Covino? Yes. Member Gaffney? Yes. Member Espejo? Abstain. Member Rappaport? Member Rappaport. Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. So that is um, 601, correct? All right, thank you. All right, um, to the applicant's attorney, we will provide a copy of that decision to you so that you may review it. All right, moving on to item 7B, a continued public hearing application thank for you, approval. Chair. Oh, thank you. Um, application for approval of an amendment to a definitive subdivision plan four and five Redmond Street. Murray Hills Incorporated is the applicant. And who is here representing Murray Hills tonight? Do I see Phyllis? <sighs> Hi, Phyllis. Hi, good evening. Uh, Hi. Um, so if you could present, I, I, we are not going to, just so everyone knows, we're not going to vote on this tonight. We're just opening tonight. We're going to hear from Phyllis representing Murray Hills about the new access, I guess is the best way to put it, to this site and what you're proposing. We'll ask some questions, but we will not be voting on it tonight. Uh, we understand, and thank okay. you. Thank you. Take it away. I'm here with Dave Romero, who will actually, our engineer, who will present the plan. Uh, and also with me is William Rudolph from Murray Hill. Uh, with that, All right, thank you. why don't I hand it over to David so that he can explain what we are proposing to do. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, uh, David Romero, Commonwealth Engineering for the record. Um, Brady, I wonder if you could Put up for me the the two the overview plans. Do you have those available? Uh, I should let me check one second. Okay, I think that's probably the best way to start. So, if you recall, uh, we came we came to the board with a uh, originally with a a proposal to improve an existing street, Redmond Street, uh, and essentially what we were doing was extending the pavement about. Uh, 200, uh, 230 feet for that proposal. But in doing so, we were crossing wetlands and we were gonna be filling uh, over 4,000 square feet of wetlands. The commission, Conservation Commission, asked us to look at an alternative and now that's what we have tonight, is now we're coming from a different <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, okay, good. Yeah, so now we're coming from the other side. Instead of coming from the uh, south, extending Redmond, now we're coming from, I guess it'd be from the, from the east, uh, extending uh, Raymond Road now. So it's paved uh, to a certain extent. We're looking to extend that about 100 and that was 200 feet and then turning on to what is actually Redmond Street layout uh, which we are going to then call McDonald Lane. So a total of about 400 and some odd feet of, of new pavement. Uh, in doing this, actually improves the wetland crossing. We, we're reducing the amount of wetlands we're filling. And we're also going to uh, not be doing a stream crossing. So we don't need a large culvert to, and we won't affect a large body of wetland. We're only gonna be affecting a, a finger finger-like projection of the wetland. Um, right now, Raymond Road is is um, about 22 feet wide, so we'll be extending the road about the same, about 22 feet. There is no formal drainage on Raymond Road. There's no, uh, no curbing. So we are proposing to uh, put in some Cape Cod curbing, about uh, 200 feet of that, and then coming down to the corner where we make the turn onto McDonald Lane, 
we will then switch over to slope granite curbing around and all of McDonald Lane will be slope granite curbing. We'll be installing catch basins. Some of it will be picking up our new road and some of it will actually be picking up the existing runoff that comes down Raymond Road. Raymond Road is kind of, a, if you've seen it, it's very steep all the way, it comes about 700 feet off of Church Lane and it's uncontrolled and it runs right off into the wetlands and there's a lot of erosion there. So we're proposing to put a couple of catch basins pick up that runoff and to discharge it to a like a sediment basin with a riprap to kind of slow it down and then it would just trickle over into the wetland. So this alternative does, does many things. It improves stormwater uh, and adds curbing. It's going to improve the grade a little bit on the end of Raymond and at the same time will be lessening the effect of the wetland filling. Um, everything else I think we have in the standard uh, stormwater will have a sewer gravity sewer, connecting water, extending water for our subdivision. And I will point out that the, these two lots do exist. We're not creating any new lots and we're not creating any road. We're just improving uh, what's there now. So I think that's a pretty quick summary of uh, the project. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm gonna ask staff to weigh in, but before we do that, um, I have, I guess a, a, a request of what I'm going to need you to bring to the next meeting. And I think until we see that, I'm, I'm actually not going to ask a whole lot of questions myself. I don't know about my fellow board members because I think it might be premature. Um, for this proposal, there are, you have a number of waivers that you would need in order to um, achieve your goal. As you know, we approve waivers for plans in order to improve them. That's the purpose of uh, why we would approve waivers would be to improve a, uh, a development. But you need to be able to show us that you can develop this subdivision without waivers. You need to show that it's you need to show that it's feasible, that it's possible, and then we can consider whether or not the waivers improve the plan. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for from you at our next meeting is that proof plan that you can, you can develop this without the waivers and before we actually consider the individual waivers. So um, I just wanna make sure that's clear. And for that reason, I'm probably not gonna ask many questions at all tonight because until I see that, I'm not sure it makes sense to get too far into the weeds. That's just my opinion, the opinion of one person on the board. I don't know how the rest of the board members will feel, but we do need to get that proof plan from you at the next meeting before we can proceed, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Staff, would you like to say anything before I see if our fellow board members have any questions? Um, I'd like to hear from the board. Uh, I will just mention that, um, because of the new direction, we are, um, we are recommending, uh, re-advertising. Um, we were just looking at, um, the, the roadway, roadway location, and if that, that has pulled out any additional new abutters, uh, we've worked with, uh, we've been working with, um, Phyllis and, and Mari Hills to just make sure that's identified and they of course agree that we should um, re-advertise for our next meeting um, for that new access location from Raymond versus um, Redmond Street. So, um, so you'll be seeing that come along. Otherwise, um, there we're just making, we wanna make sure we, uh, we have the correct waiver list for, um, the, I mean, obviously the original had waivers associated this coming off Raymond Road. If there's new waivers, um, you do have the, the the um, ten lots on the dead end street um, that you would need to waive to add these additional lots from Raymond Raymond is it Raymond Street or Raymond Road? Um, but no. uh, anyway, um, other than that, the Conservation Commission. I think there are you guys discussing this at their next meeting next week. Next. Um, That's correct. Next week, yeah. Next week, okay. And then where are you guys with the board of what? The Board of Health, are they seeing this in December? Or are they not seeing that until early January again? They're going to be seeing it in December. 
Okay. All right. So I, I want to, um, you know, we're still kind of looking for, for the comments from those boards as they continue to deliberate. So, so at this point, I, I, I really, there's a lot of things kind of still in play that I'd like to line up before we give any um, two formal comments, but with that, I'd like to hear from board members. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll run quickly through the list of board members and see who wants to comment or ask questions again. Um, I don't think we should get too far into the weeds on this until we see a proof plan, but everyone's welcome to ask questions if they like. Joe, in Pemba. Yeah, I, I don't have any comments or questions at this point, so. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Paul Raymond. Uh, I would really like to do a, a site visit down there. That makes sense, Paul. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about changing grades as we just have so forth, that uh, I get a much better feel for things if I get my feet on the ground down there. Uh, uh, and so that that would be what I, really, I would like to do if it can be arranged. I'm sure we can arrange that. Thank you, Paul. Um, and nothing else at this time? Okay. Um, Ernie, Cavino. Uh, one, one quick question just for clarification. Um, is Raymond Road being approved from looking at the plan we're looking at now from the bottom up and then left onto what is going to be McDonald Lane? Is that what we're talking? Uh, David, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. We're, we're so we'll be extending the pavement on this on this shot here in the screen. You can just see the edge of the existing pavement. So uh, we'll be extending the pavement all the way down to about again about 100 and something odd feet to the corner, and then all of McDonald Lane. Yeah. So that that's what we're looking for 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 approval for the improvement of the right of way. Yeah. Okay. So looking at this plan, Raymond Road from the bottom of the plan up and to the left onto McDonald, right? That's correct. That yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm all set. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ernie. Um, Bill Gaffney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think the only thing I was, I was looking at with Mr. Uh, Member Raymond's point is that if we're going to take a site walk, maybe there could be flat to where that corner is uh, as it's coming down the hill and taking the left. That would be important for me. And then the other one is just kind of the, the whole piece about the shared driveway, uh, those concerns that we normally have, and then certainly, you know, police and fire taking a look at access and turnarounds and, and things like that there. Thank you, Madam Okay. Chair. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Um, Mike Espio. Um, I'll, no comments or questions at this point, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Brenda? Uh, no, I have nothing to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, all right, so um, to the applicant, I think you know what we're gonna be looking for at the next meeting. I'm trying to decide, um, I guess we should talk with staff or you can talk with staff offline as to whether or not we should arrange that site visit before or after our next meeting. It might be difficult with the holidays coming up for us to get everybody out there before the next meeting, but um, we'll try to arrange that through staff, okay? I can actually uh, uh, check with conservation. They usually have, they've already been out there and two of your staff members have had a site walk with mm -hmm. us and they usually have a uh, site walk prior to their meeting. And it may be that uh, that might be convenient for the planning board, but I will talk sure. with John Keeley. I did want sure. I did want to comment that your rules and regulations don't call for a, a proof plan. And with this subdivision, I know we have asked for a waiver of uh, sidewalk and um, the uh, width of pavement, but these are 40 foot right of ways. And I don't think the proof plan is going to show you any more than you can see by just looking at the plan that we could build it out. We could build it uh, and include sidewalks and, uh, and uh, 26 foot wide pavement and, and just build it out per the regs. There's, there's room because of the right of way width and there's room because of the land beyond. Um, but uh, I'll discuss the proof plan with Mr. Murray and see what he has to say. Uh, I wish, okay. I wish your, your rules and regs did include uh, a proof plan 
it would be a lot easier when uh, we're designed to know. Well, I don't think there's anything preventing you from doing a proof plan, though. No, but by looking at it, we know that we could build it out. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that- I don't know that. I think maybe you know that, but I need to see that. But it would be good to have it in the rules and regulations so that when- That's the point well taken, Phyllis. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, uh, before we close this, I don't know if there are, I, I should have mentioned this before. Are there any neighbors that wanted to ask questions about this before we continue to the next meeting? Obviously, we're not voting on this tonight. That's, this is not your only opportunity, but if there was someone who waited through this whole meeting to ask questions, I certainly want to make sure you have a chance to do that. Hi, yes, this is um, Lynn, Lynn and Jim Unsworth at the end of Raymond Road. Hi. And we have a lot of questions, so I don't know if we should even get into it now. Like you said, this is sort of the beginning, so. Well, I, guess um, we should. I, I think it is appropriate if you want to, to tell us what your concerns may be, and then we can keep that in mind when we go out for the site visit. And also um, when we do come out on the site visit, we will inform you, you may want to join us. Yes, we'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. So initially looking at the plans, it looks like pretty much half our front lawn will be taken along with our retaining wall and our stone wall. Mm -hmm. And obviously filling in the wetlands where this was discussed years ago, I'm gonna say probably 25, 30 years ago, they tried to do that. And people were complaining about issues they were gonna have with water. So obviously filling those wetlands and filling it up is just gonna give us having water issues. And we initially were told we couldn't even put a fence near the wetlands and now you can put a road in and you can put all this fill in. I mean, it just seems ludicrous actually. <laughs> so we have, needless to say, a lot of concerns. And I definitely think with the increased traffic that they should put a sidewalk in. Mm -hmm. And another question is the road is going straight, yet for some reason they're going to the left, according to the plans. Again, cutting right into half our front lawn. So, okay. so would we be guaranteed no water damage and we would be guaranteed our property return to normal and all those things? Those are very valid concerns and something that we'll talk about, but we have it in, and you'll have ample opportunity to do okay. that. Okay. Um, it would be, if, if this goes forward, they would be required to make sure that there was no water damage to your property, that any water that um, it would be, there would be drainage systems to keep that from coming onto your property. But I certainly understand your concern. I would share it if I were living where you live. Um, so thank you for coming and I hope you'll continue to attend these meetings. Um, I think probably we're gonna learn a lot when we go out there for the site visit. Okay, great. And, and we'll be able to see your property too, which will help, be helpful. Yes, that'd be great, yes. Okay, one thank you. Question, uh, one other question is, uh, is this gonna extend Raymond Road to Fairfax eventually? Not to my knowledge, that's not part of this as far as I know. But further on, because there's a number of other site lots off of uh, Raymond Road extension. Oh. I understand so what you're saying. Be, yes. This is going to continue to be. So is it going to continue to be a dead end, or is it going to extend down through Fairfax where the other properties are that Murray Hill owns? Could I could I make a comment on that? I think if you look at, um, I it, it's difficult without looking at. The but we are extending Raymond and then taking a left to create uh, a Mac, uh, McDonald Lane on that portion of Redmond Street. If you look at Raymond Road as if you continue straight, the land to the right of it, um, I don't know if that's east or wh whatever, but to the right, that's owned by the town of Burlington and I believe it's conservation land. Uh, our lot that we're going to develop is uh, on the uh, on the left. Uh, that's numbered lot five. And if, although we cannot see it on this plan, if you were to continue up Raymond Road, uh, 
we have a conservation restriction uh, that we are in the process of finalizing uh, with Mr. Murray's other parcel. And that conservation restriction is um, dedicated to uh, the Conservation Commission. And then he owns another parcel on the other side of Somerset Street and, um, on, and on Raymond Road as it, it goes up to it, I believe Fairfax. Right. Uh, that parcel we're offering to give to the Conservation Commission uh, with this. So um, I don't see how Raymond Road could be or why anyone would want to develop it any further. I, I don't know. There would be no purpose because all of that land is now going to be beyond five is either conservation or currently uh, under the control of the town of Burlington. So that there'd, there'd be no reason for, for developing it that I can think of. Certainly no reason for us to want to develop it. I, I can't speak for the town, but um, I, I can't think of anything. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there any other right, neighbors that have, excuse me? Is there another neighbor that would like to ask a question or make a comment? No, okay. All right, um, I think we're gonna continue this to our next meeting and we're gonna ask staff to work to arrange that site visit. Maybe we can do it at the same time as conservation as Phyllis suggested, that seems like it would be efficient. Um, so we will arrange that and we will make sure that the neighbors are informed. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion? Oh, just uh, just quickly before you make the motion, for any of the yes. neighbors that are on this call, um, Jen Gelinas in our office keeps lists of um, interested abutters and neighbors to make sure that we're contacting them for any um, events or updates. Um, so just if you haven't already submitted your name to be contacted about things, um, please send an email to planning at burlington.org and then we can certainly notify you of any site, site walks or, or such. So just thank you. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. May I have a motion? To continue this matter for the planning board meeting of January? Or January 7th, yes. January 7th, yes. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Thank you Brenda. Chairman Drew. Yes. Vice Chairman Epemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Dino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And we'll Thank you. see you all in January. Happy holidays to all of you who are leaving. I know some of us are staying. <laughs> so uh, we actually have a number of matters for discussion tonight. Um, the first one is regarding Zero Birch Street, which um, I know all of us, we had that before us recently, and it was withdrawn. Um, and we know that um, the building inspector has ruled that this would, that this particular subdivision could not be developed. And I think this is going before the Board of Appeals. So um, what I am asking for us to do is to have a vote that we, and ask our staff to draft a letter to the Board of Appeals, just um, basically in saying that we support the building inspector's decision so that the Board of Appeals has that information and knows that we support the building inspector's decision regarding Zero Birch Street. So does anyone have any questions? They want to talk about that at all? Yes, Ernie. Um, what is the building inspector's decision based on, do you know? <laughs> Kristen, why don't you fill, why, I thought we had discussed that, sorry. Um, so when, if you recall, the Birch Street subdivision was withdrawn from consideration with the planning, planning board. Yes. Um, yes. What the issue at hand was at the time, and I, I know we sent around the um, the interpretation um, to this to you guys, and I certainly can do that again. Um, no, but in 
summary, it was the um, uh, the situation where if you have a non-conforming lot and you are, it is in common ownership, then okay. the common ownership, um, and with this lot, the history shows that in, at two points in time, um, since the early 1900s, that this was in common ownership with the adjacent lot, um, both with the Reeds and the Danahers, um, and therefore under state law, right. it would have merged yeah. to be one lot if there was a non-conforming lot. Um, right. okay. in, in completely in summary. Um, so that is the gist of the letter that will help prepare with the building department. Um, we agree with that interpretation and um, that's why it's just a question of, they, I believe they're scheduled for December 15th um, to open the hearing um, with the Board of Appeals. And we just wanted to mention it to, to you guys that this was happening. And if you did want to weigh in, um, we would do that um, in terms of that process. So um, that's what we're asking. Okay, thank you. That's what I was looking for. Yep, if they were in common ownership, obviously, yep, doesn't apply. Anybody else have any questions? No, I'm in support of this motion. All right. Then um, I am looking for a motion. Madam yeah, Chair, sure I make a motion. The plan board is in full agreement with the building inspector Ungerson's letter and hereby instructs planning staff to write a letter to the Board of Appeals in support of the building inspector's decision. Seconded by Mike Joe. Thank you both. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gap. Yes. Member Espejo. Yep. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about now is the master plan. And I know um, everyone has access to it now, and there's a lot of information in there. So, um, I'd like to discuss briefly um, the recommendations for housing in town center. But before we get to that, um, I had sent an email out to everyone earlier today with a suggestion as to um, a way I, what I would like to see us, the way we could vote on this that I think would make it a little bit more manageable. And I wanted to ask if you all had had a chance to review that and, and give me some feedback on that suggestion. And to clarify, in case you didn't get a chance to read it, <laughs> what I suggested was because this document is so huge, so detailed, and it's really packed with information, it's it's a wonderful thing, but it also makes it a little bit hard to get your arms around. So what I wanted us to consider is reformatting the document so we had a section that was just the recommendations, with the understanding that those recommendations are based on all the other information in the in the bigger document but that we separate out the recommendations and vote just on the recommendations for each element. And then I think it's a little bit tighter and a little easier to get our arms around that way. That's what I'm, I'm looking for feedback on from the rest of you. Madam Chair, can I have a, yeah. ask a question? Of course. So I, I did get your email and I did, was able to review the uh, recommendation section can you just for maybe brenda and i just give us an overview of what needs to be done with the master plan what we're what we're doing here and give us kind of because i'm a little kind of confused on what what has to be done what what we're doing here what the goal is i'm just if you could give me us a little info on that that would be very helpful please understandable it's been going on for a while and you weren't here for the beginning of it so the planning board before you two were on it had already gone pretty far into this process and we had discussed all of the elements and I think approved the elements with the exclusion of the town center element and the housing element. So in a way we, I don't wanna open up a whole can of worms, but at the same time, you two haven't had a chance to weigh in on the other elements and I want to give you that opportunity to do that. So that's why I've asked you to review all of the elements and, and focus a lot on the recommendations. For tonight's discussion, I was hoping to get some feedback 
specifically on the town center recommendations and the housing recommendations, because those are the two elements that the rest of the board, that none of us have actually buttoned up. Does that help at all? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. So, so Madam Chair, if I may kind of also summarize kind of where yes. we are. So the plan that we developed way back when um, was, <coughs> Um, was that each element we kind of bring to the board, have a presentation and discuss and kind of, is this, are we in the right wheelhouse? Are there big red flags or in the good direction? And then at the end, kind of package it all back up and say, we're gonna vote on, you know, the whole. And the two sections, we had a housing discussion, we had two housing discussions, but we hadn't quite finalized. Um, the board wasn't kind of unanimously ready to say, yes, I'm good with this section. And the town center section, we just hadn't really got to because we were still <clears throat> discussing the housing section. So um, what the board needs to do is if they want, I mean, we don't have to individually go through those two sections. We can just kind of just as a whole go through those. <clears throat> me, um, recommendations of all of the elements. I mean, the other alternative is to really go through a lot more of it in depth, but um, as uh, as Madam Chair, Chair recommended, would it be easier to really get at the recommendations holistically and just ensure that we were taking all in agreement with those that direction so we can kind of get this done? Um, we kind of ran into a little bit of a logjam of just having, you know, a, a lot of cooks in the kitchen and a lot of comments and a lot of, and it just, it, it got a little bit, um, exhaustive and then we got really busy and permitting takes over and then it's been just hard to get back to it. So um, I think that it's a good uh, it's a good place to start to review the recommendations and make sure that those directions are um, consistent with what everyone's thinking about because those are really the the action items that come out of this plan. Um, and but certainly if there are comments on the plan, especially from Brenda and Mike, um, because you haven't been as in-depthly involved from the beginning, um, we welcome those. And I also see folks on the phone that have been with us um, for quite some time. Uh, I know Carol's on the phone and um, I carry Donahue. I think you are, you've been involved in the housing sections and um, we appreciate your your feedback and I believe a member now of the housing partnership. So so um, anyway, just on on those, those items and those folks, I, I also wanna just reach out to the, the people that have been involved so for the long haul as well. Um, so that's where we are and we really want to try to, to, to button it up. I think, you know, it's been a fantastically wonderful process, but it's been a fantastically wonderful long amount of time that we need to just kind of finalize it so we can move policy, policy forward. And I, I mean, I just got an email tonight um, from Peter Cola saying that the selectmen asked them as to what historical stuff was in the master plan to further the policies. And I was like, oh, wow, there's a, some other people are talking about the master plan. So yeah, it, it, it's time. We agree. And I think finding that path forward is a good way yes. to think about it. It's time, it's time to, to finish it up. Um, so what I was hoping to do tonight is two things. I want to hear from staff as, and I'm not sure if they can answer the question now or if they'll need to get back to us tomorrow about how they want to implement or how they want to receive our suggestions and changes if they want us to be, what, what the best way is for them to receive our comments to make it easier for them. And then I thought we could just briefly discuss each of the, the recommendations from the two elements, not in detail, not going through piece by piece, but hear from each member as to whether or not you feel comfortable with the recommendations, with the direction that it's going, and then we'll get specific comments to staff offline. Does that make sense? So regarding the commenting, um, Madam yes. Chair, so I am, um, since we kind of, we spoke this afternoon and since then um, I, have been kind of racking my brain and I think I have a good idea of how I would like to um, get comments in and I um, we're going to be using a Google Doc. If people are um, familiar with that and doing commenting and I will send a more um, detailed instructions on how I'd like you to do that um, okay. probably next week. 
um, okay. just so that um, everybody's on the same page and like explicit directions, because I think it will be helpful to have everything all in one place instead of somebody calling me and somebody sending an email and like, getting lost and all. And writing <laughs> so just having right. it all in one place would be really helpful. Um, so that is um, to come. So have that. Um, be waiting for that in your email. Okay. Great. Great. So, Chair, I have a, uh, if you don't mind, I have a quick question. Of course. Um, in re reviewing those documents, um, some of the information and, and statistics I think are a bit dated. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Are those going to be updated as well? Are those, you know, is the commentary going to yeah. be updated? Yeah. Because, you know, oops. Very good question. I, I don't know the answer. I think, and I'm going to let staff answer the question. I, I think the way I'm looking at this is that that data informs these recommendations, but the recommendations are not, um, they're not dated. They are not um, affected by the fact that some of the data that was used to come up with the recommendations is now old. I, but whether or not that will be updated, I'm not sure, Kristen. Um, so, uh, the, I mean, most of the sections, the answer is uh, not until we really look at kind of the, the updates to those sections. And what we do have in our budget is we have um, some funds to do for implementation of the master plan and or updates of the master plan, not, not a whole bunch of funds, but just yearly and annually. Um, funds to to look at things like that and um, you know things like the economic development section I mean that that section is a dated section but Melissa Tantakos is also looking and had received funding at the last town meeting to do an updated um, plan to to bridge off of the previous plan but to, to uh, the chairman's point it, it is that a lot of the data did inform these these issues there has been some changes you know the transportation section there have been changes, but overall, I think you're still seeing some of the same trends um, in terms of needing more multimodal, more walkability and, and stuff like that. So um, it, it's a hard decision because it's been so long, you kind of feel like, oh, well, since it's been so long, we should update it. But I think at this point, we're looking to let's finish it. And when we need to bring it up to revise it, we will talk about that when um, when it comes up, but I mean, if there's certain things that are just obvious that we can update, we certainly can look at that, but it's one of those just trying to figure out, and this was a lot of kind of how we got snowballed with this is at what point do we just decide it's done? Um, and you know, it's how long has this been? I mean, this master plan has been like a, you know, a, a baby that's turned into a toddler that turned into a child. So it's like, um, you know, it's, you gotta, I don't know. For me, I, I, it's been hard to kick out of the nest, and I apologize for that. But it's it's just yeah. When is I, it done? I'm a little hesitant to try to update all of the data that's in the background because I think that will never get finished if we try to do that again. Because it it was um, it's not like it's a simple update that would take a lot of time. I'm sorry, Amy. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I noticed it. Just in the housing uh, element alone, or the summary of the housing element alone, uh, that I, I'm sure we've all at least glanced at it, if not read it in, in, in detail. It refers to uh, statistics taken from the 2010 census. And I don't, have we already, I don't know if we've already accomplished some of those things, and we wouldn't really know until we look at the, the most recent data. Whether that maybe that gets done in the implementation phase. Okay. Okay. Maybe that gets done in the implementation phase. That, that makes sense. I yeah, think that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Sorry. So, Man, so I um, think with the, uh, this is Bill, just with the housing data, I think was probably important because you asked us to look at those too. And what I noticed on that that, she, that jumped out at me was uh, all of the, the, the multi family uh, apartment activity that was planned has actually all been completed. Pretty much yeah, all, all some of know, tests, yeah. right? And except for the 300 that we've got in Northwest Park over there, but the rest of them, and that's it's a, it's a fairly large number, right? If you mm -hmm. think of ones at the corporate place and and the other 300, over there, you're talking a thousand or maybe units or so. And if you if you roll that back into the percentages of 
single family versus uh, multifamily, it really skews the data. So now the plan says we need more multifamily, but now it's the, the pie's really changed. And you say, well, maybe we're already there. And now we really need to focus on the senior. So that the part of here's the things that are planned that have been completed. I think that's probably the key thing that needs to be updated. So you get a real good feel of uh, where we are today. The rest of the stuff I was kind of okay with. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah and I and Bill, no, I, I completely agree um with certain things like that. And to oh. that point, that rec when you look at that recommendation, how is that recommendation informed with what's happened over the last five years? There have been things that have happened. So I mean, when you're looking specifically at the recommendation and moving forward, you you have to to note these things have happened and now we're at thirteen point two percent. So I think those type of comments are important to make. But in terms of rerunning every single number in there, no, 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 redoing no. all the analysis. That's the point where we just had to draw the line. But certain things when you look at the how does how does a certain data point affect the recommendation? If it drastically changes how you would go about rec doing the recommendation, I think we need to note that and or note what has changed or, you know, as we talked about um with the unknown of well what's going to happen? Well, you know, we want to add in certain <laughs> sections questions. There's these are the things that we want to be looking at, but these are the questions we have. Well, what if, what if this, this, and this happens? Then maybe we think about a different direction because we don't know. And especially right now, I and mean, we're living in this total, we don't know, a lot of people don't know really what's going to be next, but um, just, you know, with the, the state of emergency, but, um, you know, at least we can outline, this is what we know now, this is what we're thinking about, and this is, what we might still have questions about, but what we do know is that we've built a number of housing. We we have um, create we have secured our safe harbor in um, 40B a lot more than we had originally. So I think those those are the key things that we would definitely be looking for um, to to tag in the the plan for finalizing. So th no, that's an excellent point, Bill. Thanks. Barbara, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Thank you. So we're going to get instructions from Liz as to how to give very specific comments on the on the different elements and different the recommendations. Um, does anyone want to? Do we want to discuss town center and housing recommendations a little bit tonight at a sort of at a more high level thing, not going and changing wording exactly, but whether or not can we, feel or, we, or would you guys prefer a working because we can we can schedule some working sessions this month um on those two sense. i mean we're honestly um with the um magnitude of your agenda and decisions tonight we're not you know in a great place to be giving presentations and going through a lot of these findings and as much as if you guys have comments we certainly welcome them but in terms of a working session on those in, in particular um, especially even others, other of those other folks on the on the meeting that might be interested can also attend. So. Barbara, I, that makes sense. Answer, you you asked a question at the beginning there about uh, the putting all the recommendations in one place. Yes. And whether that and and you wanted us to weigh in on whether we thought that might be bad. I think that would be a a good idea, and it shouldn't be too difficult to do either, as long as we also leave them in the. Uh, End of, end of each summary. I'm and, fine with uh, that. My point was to keep them in one place together, but also that we vote on the recommendations, not on everything else. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, well, yeah, the recommendations are the, are the, 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 recommendations right, are the based fruit of the things, and a, right. a lot of that has to be updated. We're not going to be voting on stuff that some of it's a little outdated, but the recommendations are not outdated. Right. At least right. most of the time. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. Concur. All right. So, I think a working group makes sense because I think it would be difficult to try and tackle that night tonight. You know, it's already well after ten o'clock, and to try and get into both of these now, probably we wouldn't be able to get as far as we need to. So, does everyone else feel comfortable with doing that, setting up a working session to work on, and maybe we do, you know. One element at a time, just the recommendations. That's and start with the two that we haven't already done. <laughs> Madam Chair, since since we do have some people here who don't normally attend, who might have only attended for 
to speak maybe on housing? Could we see if they had something to say before? Oh, of we... course, yes. But I just want to okay. hear from okay. the board members sure. first as to how they feel about postponing and having a working group, a working session to work on these things. Does anyone object Not to that? To no objection. No objection. All right. That no. having been said, um, as Ernie pointed out, we have some people attending here that are probably here to talk about master plan. That are not on planning board of course they are all welcome to come to the working group as well but if any of you want to make any comments or ask any questions now is your chance anyone uh this is carrie donahue i don't have any questions but i'd be happy to attend the um the working group okay lovely we'd love to have you come anyone else okay all right um so we're going to be looking for information from Liz as to how to give Thank feedback. Chair. Carol has her hand up. Oh, sorry, I was just Carol. trying. I was trying to unmute. I'm used to hitting the thing. I'm okay. not used to uh, WebEx. Sorry. Um, Hi, Carol. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> Carol Perna, Precinct One. Uh, for, as you, you, most of you know, I'm former planning board member and a steer, a master plan steering committee member. So I'm really happy. To see that you guys are um, back to master plan after <laughs> a while. Um, I know that you've been very busy. Um, with the housing, I know that um, Bill had mentioned something about the, the multiple um, families, and that's that's all well and good because it's all, but it's all apartment, big, big multiple families. I know that um, one thing that we had talked about at one point was smaller, like maybe less than four unit multi multi families, um, you know, and there's ways that they can look like single families, but have have two, um, two to three units in them too. Um, and I think that's something that that Burlington needs a, a little bit more of is um, so, some of that type or or some um accessory housing or 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 even um quarter size lots smaller lot sizes um in in not not in the whole town but in, in certain er if there were certain areas or something so that was just something that um we had talked a lot about at one point um Carol, a lot of that is in lacking. the conditions in the housing element, um, and we obviously have to go over that. We haven't um, got feedback from everybody on that, but a lot of what you mentioned is actually a lot of those things are in this recommendation. Um, so we will be discussing the group too, which I hope you'll. Attend. Yes, I hope I hope that um, I'm available when so oops. Because okay. I would like to attend those. Okay, good. Not at 7 okay. 30 in the morning, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's going to make a quick comment. <laughs> I make a comment. So, when you guys worked on this last, we didn't have Melissa. I, I was reading it through most of the, uh, the town center. I read like the whole thing. It's, it's interesting. And I think you, I mean, now that we have this new economic development director and she's doing so great, I think you need some major rewrites to include her and her department in our, our goal as a town. She's now like a, she's now like a stalwart fixture. And um, I think we need to do definitely put her in specifically and get her involved in this because um, she's now a huge part of what we do. Good point. That's it. Sorry that it took me a minute. I had to go let my dog out, but I'm back. <laughs> um, but I do hear everything you said, Mike. Um, and the phrase major rewrite kind of makes me <laughs> nervous. <laughs> but but I understand what you're saying, that we need to get um, Melissa's input, and, and I think she probably will want to be involved in that process. Not only her input, but get her, I mean, mentioned in here, like, Yes, economic development director involved. Yes. Yada, yada, and all that. Right. I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Um, right. 
staff is going to work on setting up that working group meeting and let's try to do it as soon as possible because we I did set a very aggressive goal of trying to finish this by the end of January. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, if we fail, at least we've set a goal and we'll try for February, but we really need to get get this done. All right, so um, also on our discussion list, we have the release of lots. Is that right, Kristen? For yeah, we uh, we forgot to um, put uh, the release of lots for building purposes only in Chandler Road. Um, okay. So I Liz sent a motion over, but I modified it a little bit. So um, if you wouldn't mind, I certainly can read the motion that you will need to consider. Thank um, you. And the issue is that, I mean, you don't meet again until um, January 7th. So what we would like to do is the covenant isn't totally finalized, but it, you can make the motion. Um, so what we've said is the a motion, motion, the planning board hereby releases lots one, two, and three of the Mill Pond Estates, um, of, of the Mill Pond Estates in Burlington Mass Definitive Subdivision from the conditional approval covenant for building purposes only. The motion and lots will be held until such time as the conditional approval covenant is filed with the Registry of Deeds. The conditional approval covenant remains in effect until the subdivision is declared complete by the planning board. So what you will be doing is you'll be voting to release the lots. We are going to hold the, that release until we get the final, um, just the, the confirmation of filing. Um, and then we will um, uh, have that action to um, release the lots. But without your motion, we'd have to wait um another month or so before we can even consider it so we just want to try to get the motion for building permits and we can finalize stuff on our end so you can say so moved and vote if you like so moved second liz will do roll call thank you all right so roll call chairman larue yes vice chairman Impumba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. So moved. Okay, thank you everyone. So the other item that we have for discussion here is um, illegal signs and enforcement and <laughs> I think this is a, a this is a big issue and it's one that's been dogging us for a long time and um, actually talking with Kristen and Joe earlier today what we were talking about and it's something I think we I really would like us to move forward on is to um, form a committee that would include some planning board members one or two planning staff um, probably um, Melissa Tentaculous and also people from building eventually a, a committee to talk about um, a position for enforcement. In short term, I think we probably need to just work with the building staff to figure out what, what can be done. Because the problem that we run into time and time again is as an elected board and we're we're putting together these decisions. We work really hard on them, and then when when developers or when businesses in town don't abide by the the, the conditions that we have given them, we don't have the authority to do anything about it. We're, we are reliant upon the building department and they are overworked and understaffed and it's a difficult situation because we, you know, we put a lot of effort into these decisions and if we can't, if they don't get enforced, they don't really mean anything. And it's very frustrating for all of us. I know that. Um, so we can, we can talk about it till we're blue in the face about all of these feather signs and other of their enforcement issues, but we don't have the authority to do anything about it. And it's, it's find it, I find it very frustrating. So I think that we need to set up a meeting to discuss with the new building inspector, what his vision is about how to handle these problems. And we can explain what our frustrations are and try to come up with a plan together 
about how to move forward. And um, I would like to attend that meeting. I think we need to keep it from being too large, but I suspect there are a couple of members here who would want to join me in that meeting, Bill. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm going to ask staff to set that up. Um, I know. I know that there's a lot of individual transgressions that we all probably want to bring forward and we can do that if you want to. But my frustration just stems from the fact that we can talk about it all night long and we can't do anything about it. I think we need it. We need somebody who we need to make that somebody's job. And I don't know if that means we're hiring a new person or if it means they're changing different job descriptions. I don't know how that gets fixed. But it, it needs to be addressed. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? Madam Chair Paul, the, yes, there Paul. must be some, some people that have figured out a way to control the, the signs. And I, I think, you know, that we are we ought to start off with a literature search or, or whatever other kind of search we can do to find out if there's anybody successful in doing that. And the reason I would be willing to uh, participate in that effort is every time I get my Dunkin' Donuts in the morning, I'm gagging over those flag signs that mm -hmm. are out front. And, yes. Uh, uh, that's you know, just one example. They've become it's they're breeding like rabbits all over town. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. I I completely agree with Sorry. you. Um, we might also want to reach out to Melissa because she does come to us from Lex. She did come to us from Lexington, right. and you don't right. see a whole lot of that going on in Lexington. So maybe we can figure out how they stopped it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Barbara, this is Bill. You know, before COVID, uh, I had, because of my, what I do during my day job, I have responsibility for the Americas and what I do. And uh, I, I get an opportunity to travel around the country. And it's it's funny, you you go from town to town and you you kind of, it's just, it's fairly clear. You come into a town, you say, oh, that one is not, either they're allowing it or they're not good in enforcement. And you just drop into the next line and you can see that that town is much different just at a, general perception. And uh, I think you have that as you cross from Lexington to Burlington uh, as well. So like you said, somebody's figured it out, Paul, and uh, you know, we're, we're just struggling to figure out uh, who's a genius that, is, that knows how to do that. <laughs> you know? I agree. I agree. On, okay. On, Madam Chair, on the, on the signs, staying on signs for a second, uh, subcommittee of the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, which is working on signs for the town center is meeting next to uh, next uh, Monday, I think it is. Uh, if people are okay. interested in starting to work on the town center, and that's one of the issues that is coming up, is uh, should they be allowed? Should they not be allowed? And if right. and they if are not allowed, how do we keep them from? How do we keep them? Right. And I think Melissa did attend one of our meetings, and we asked we asked her that, and I. I don't remember her whole answer, but one of her answers was uh, Lexington has a lot of uh, historical districts where it's much easier to enforce that kind of thing. Although in the center of town, obviously, I don't think that's historical. But who knows? Thank you. So why, why would historical versus town overlay be different to, to enforce? I, I don't know if the uh, money fines can be higher, Bill. Or I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know if the money fines can be higher. I don't know what the, uh, I have no idea. Well, we can look into it. It's, it she's a resource. Maybe ask her again. Yeah. Into it. Sure. I think Paul's point is well taken. There are some towns that are doing this well, and we need to learn from them. Mm -hmm. so. Agree. And, and uh, on that same issue, can we meet? Uh, we were going to meet the building inspector sometime. On one yes. Meeting. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, have a, form, I have a formally asked. We introduced him to the DCM group this week. Um, but uh, I expect uh, one of your January meetings. Okay, good. Yes, but I, in terms of the, this discussion, I, I would start, as I mentioned to um, Barbara earlier, I, I think it's important to first start and understand what the building department's thinking themselves before getting like a yeah. huge umbrella in. And I, I think a casual conversation there is the, the right place to start, mm -hmm. especially with 
Ernie, to your point, the new um, inspector to see. I'm sure coming mm -hmm. in, he has some, mm -hmm. some thoughts. I mean, we all have thoughts to right. with the team, so. So um, to that end, Kristen, could I ask you to set up that meeting and I want to attend. I'm pretty sure Bill wants to attend. We we probably don't want to overwhelm him, but um, if we could just as a starting point, I think that would make sense. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We can and Bill, I'm assuming that you want to be in on this, but I don't, I probably shouldn't assume. Does that? Yeah, am sure. I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to arrange my schedule around it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any other items that they want to bring up tonight? Uh, this oh. is just. Bill, just a question. So no meeting two weeks from now? Is that right? No right. meeting two weeks from now. We don't have okay. any meeting till January 7th. We'll try to do um some working groups um between yes. now and then. Um so we'll we'll let people know of those. Um I actually wanted to Ernie, you mentioned there was a housing partnership meeting um at the last meeting. And if that happened, can you give us a, a just a uh, just a quick the update? one that's up I think? The one that's up, the, we is have one com coming. I'm not sure. That's you meant. I wrote down uh, housing partnership oh, well, 6 p.m. and I didn't write down a date. So if it had uh, happened, I wanted the report. But it's, I'm it's coming up. To then, that's great. We'll figure that out. There, there is there is an upcoming one, and there was there a previous one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I no, no, I'm it's not okay. Um, to, we uh, we have been um, working with Judy Barrett. Or Barrett planning L, um, with for the Northwest Park. The next meeting is on the 16th, but it's been um, it's been very interesting um, talking with her about just different affordable housing strategies for the Northwest Park units. But I think what's really coming to light in in talking with Judy is, you know, she works with so many communities, and I think, you know, Burlington does a lot really well, um, but affordable housing has really fallen into kind of a who feels like picking it up kind of situation really and and not really formalizing it and and I think the housing partnership was in the past a very strong committee I think it's gone through some some fits and starts recently I think you have some strong membership now um but you know with especially changes um in staffing at the top I mean I'm really who I don't know who's wearing that hat right now and and I also, I know it's a lot of, it's a big role. There's a lot of stuff to do. And I, I know I personally care about it, but you know, have backed away a little bit just to make sure that we're balancing what we do in our department. Um, and um, anyway, I, I guess, I think it's something that I would like to work more with the housing partnership and understand the, the goals for leadership on affordable housing and where that rests in the future. We do, uh, there is a housing Partnership meeting next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Okay. Uh, Wednesday. Next Thursday. Excuse me. Thursday. Thursday at six o'clock. Six. Webex. Right, yeah. I wrote six, but I didn't write a date. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry. All right. Thanks, Ernie. May I, Madam Chair, Paul, may I make a comment on housing? Of course. It's my understanding, and I don't think that's changed, that the state goal is for every town to have at least 10% of their housing affordable. And if you didn't, there were certain penalties and ways that they could urge you to do that. And since I've been on the planning board, Burlington has always, as far as I know, been above our 10%. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I asked one time one of the staff members, we even went a step beyond that and did a friendly 40B. And I don't think many towns have done that. Uh, so my feeling is as far as housing, yes, yeah. it'd be nice, but I think we've, we've done pretty well and been ahead of the curve as far as uh, you know, generating affordable housing and uh, uh, so that uh, that so I don't have that strong an interest in it because you know if we really want to we could do forty Bs every year if the selectmen would go along with it. Thank you. I think we want to do forty Bs every year. <laughs> <laughs> Not every um, year. Yeah, and but I think the point is well taken. We've yeah, done a I good mean, job. It, I think we have, um, but yeah. in this window of kind of 
not 40B, not as Carol was mentioning, not the, the 400 unit something, 200 unit, that what are these smaller projects look like? What is this, you know, I sell my, this in between situation that we're dealing with at Northwest Park of, uh, you know, that they have too much asset to qualify for affordable housing, but there's also nothing left in Burlington. Affordable. So it's that kind of a, what's that situation? And, and I think it's been an interesting conversation to figure that out, especially as you guys are seeing, you know, everybody's tearing down what was affordable and building stuff that's way at not affordable. So how do we, you know, meet, meet all of our needs? And anyway, it's an interesting discussion moving forward. So thank you. Okay. All right. Madam Chair, I have one quick thing. Yes. Um, our next meeting is January 7th. Mm -hmm. um, it's my birthday. So if I could <laughs> make a motion that everyone dresses in party attire, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. That's You'll awful. have to remind us beforehand. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful suggestion, Mike. All right. Um, Anything else, or are we ready to adjourn? Just one, motion to adjourn. One real, one real, one real quick oh. thing. Can what? I just ask Kristen if she painted the picture that's on the wall over that I can see? I've been wanting to ask that right there. That one. That one. Right. I've been wanting to ask that question for the last two meetings. Is that yours? Is it original, Kristen, or, or not? You're on mute, Kristen. You're on mute, Kristen. Or maybe you don't want to talk. <laughs> no, Can't I hear didn't, you. I didn't paint it. There you go. I didn't you did not paint it. No. Oh, okay. It's one year older than me. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. But I like it though. It's, it's like plexiglass too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Sorry, Madam Chair. Didn't mean to extend the meeting that long. <clears throat> My my entire house is uh, charcoal gray and navy blue, pretty much. So I try to like make one room a little bit less masculine, I guess. Okay, I am ready for a motion. Motion Mike adjourned. made it. I second it. Second. Uh, Chairman second. Larue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney? Yes. Member Espejo? Yes. Member Rappaport? Yes. So moved. All right. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.